They went to Puerto Rico to help orphans. Then that big quake hit, and it has been a harrowing journey for them all over. Tonight they've landed, and we are hearing from these local students who found themselves right in the middle of this natural disaster. Plus, Amon's effort to stop a bully lands her in jail. Why she's the one who's now facing charges. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. The American people should be extremely grateful and happy. No Americans were harmed in last night's attack by the Iranian regime. After what seemed like a brief easing of tensions today, reports of more apparent rocket fire to Iraq tonight by a U.S. embassy. Iraq's military says the two rockets hit Baghdad's heavily fortified green zone tonight. And it houses government buildings, including the U.S. Embassy. Iraqi police sources tell NBC News at least one of the rockets fell about 100 yards from the U.S. Embassy, and it caused a fire. As of now, there are no reports of casualties. The White House has yet to comment. Mm. This latest attack coming just hours after President Donald Trump reassured the American public following a pair of airstrikes at a coalition bases in Iraq last night. 11 Alive is where Atlanta speaks, so we reached out directly to you to see what questions you had about the ongoing tensions between the U.S. and Iran. Elvin Lopez spoke to a Georgia State professor to get some answers for you tonight. I want to take a step back here because some of you are asking how we even got to this place with Iran. Many asking about Qasim Soleimani's death. He was the top Iranian military leader who was killed in a U.S. drone strike Friday near Baghdad's airport. He led the elite Quds Force, which is part of the Revolutionary Guards that also reports to Iran's supreme leader. It is classified as a foreign terrorist organization by the United States. The Pentagon has blamed Soleimani for a recent series of attacks on allied bases in Iraq, including a rocket strike in December that killed a U.S. contractor and wounded four service members. President Trump says that Soleimani was planning new attacks on American targets, but has not publicly released many details about that threat. The president characterized Iran as standing down today after last night's airstrikes, and Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said the world is a safer place because of the Iranian commander's death. But our viewer Jared Jordan says he believes there will be more attacks. We asked Georgia State Professor Dr. Alan Fromhertz, a Middle East policy expert, about that. I don't know if we're safer, but uh, in the next few days, if things calm down, if there's mention of talks on both sides, then I would be confident in saying that, that we are in a safer place, hopefully. Right now, the United States has about 5,000 troops in Iraq, with thousands more being deployed to the Middle East. The House will vote tomorrow on a war powers resolution to limit the Trump administration's military actions against Iran. According to House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, we've reached out to every Georgia representative and senator in Capitol Hill for a reaction to the president's remarks today. You can find the responses on 11alive.com. Now, still to come in prime time, our Verify team is looking into fake, phony, fraudulent images shared online following the missile attacks last night. The Atlanta Public Schools cheating scandal impacted a generation of students, but one of the first former educators sent to prison in the case was just granted parole. Tamara Cotman is one of 11 former teachers and administrators convicted of racketeering. They're accused of changing students' answers on standardized tests and pocketing performance bonuses. Cotman turned herself in back in October of 2018 after she lost her appeal to the state Supreme Court. State officials say Cotman was eligible for parole in September but was just released January 2nd. More than a decade later, several former Atlanta public school employees are still in court fighting to clear their names. Reveal investigator Faith Abube sat down with one teacher who's out on appeal working to prove her innocence and the investigators behind the conviction. This is his handprint. The birth of Shawnee Robinson's child will forever be linked to one of the most trying times in her life. <laughs> And it wasn't because of the baby. Amari was born 10 days after Robinson and 10 other Atlanta public school educators were convicted for cheating on state standardized tests called the CRCTs. Georgia used the scores to determine how well students were doing in math and reading and other subjects. When the 2009 CRCT results came back, struggling students miraculously had exceptional scores. You can't make that kind of progress under those circumstances, but yet the test results said that it was being made. It wasn't. 
was a lie. Former prosecutor Bob Wilson was one of the investigators then-Governor Sonny Perdue appointed to look into what some suspected was widespread cheating, not by the kids, but by the educators themselves. It started at the top. Dr. Beverly Hall was the superintendent of the schools. Dr. Hall put immense pressure on her leadership team, especially in the academic side, and the principals to achieve certain scores. Some of Dr. Hall's own staff said as much during the trial. My evaluation was tied to student achievement. It was a hard decision to make, but I just did it, and I know it was a wrong decision. Wilson's team and prosecutors implicated 178 APS educators in the cheating scandal. Many of those educators confessed and took plea deals. I waste and we won't. But not Robinson, pregnant and all. I will never admit to something I didn't do. You didn't change the test score? No. You didn't change the answers? No. I was angry that I had been falsely accused. Robinson has never doubted teachers cheated, especially those in economically disadvantaged areas. But she believes the district and state leaders used the teachers as scapegoats to avoid addressing larger problems in public education. I'm sorry, children were hurt. Face the truth. Stop making excuses for yourself. And today we heard from the attorney for one of those convicted who said he is filing an appeal to, for the Fulton County Conviction Integrity Unit to review all of the convictions. Coming up later in the 9 o'clock hour of 11 Live in primetime, we look into the programs meant to help those students catch up that have largely missed their target. We got 11 Alive storm trackers tracking those temperatures today that were pretty comfortable for the most part. Started out a little chilly, but we made it all the way up into the low 60s by late this afternoon. And now temperatures starting to drop off a bit. But high pressure is in charge, so that gives us clear, dry conditions for now. But we will see, see that start to change as we head in towards the weekend. So for right now, high pressure is still keeping us mild and dry with temperatures in the mid 30s in Blairsville, but in the upper 40s in Athens and low 50s right now in the Atlanta area. So we're looking at fairly mild temperatures for uh, January, that's for sure. So the next 12 hours, we'll continue to see those clear skies, temperatures getting down into the mid to upper 30s once again all across the Atlanta, Atlanta metro area and then we'll start to see things change so a nice clear quiet pattern for now showers move in on Friday and intensify during the evening hours and then we have a potential for severe storms on Saturday so coming up we'll time it out for you and let you know one way you can help keep your family safe. Stopping your speed feed tonight, a driver is dead after a head-on wreck with a school bus. A video from the 11 Alive Sky Tracker is showing the front of the bus looking mangled after police say an SUV crossed the center line and then hit it. It happened near Highway 113 in Spinks Road. That's in Carroll County. The driver of the SUV was killed. She has been identified tonight as 53-year-old Sherry Penn of Temple. It sounds like one of the students on the bus and the bus driver are both going to be okay. Repairs are now complete after a massive fire shut down a busy street in East Atlanta for almost 24 hours. Flames took over the business and then spilled out onto Memorial Drive yesterday. Witnesses described seeing 40-foot flames shooting into the air. The Atlanta Gaslight says private contractors hit a 6-inch natural gas line. A stolen delivery van has been returned to Amazon, but police say they are still looking for the people who took it. An Amazon delivery driver told police a man stole the van from him at gunpoint on Sunday in southwest Atlanta. He says the man also took his phone. Police say they later found the van in East Point. An officer is out of surgery after he was hit by a train while running after a suspect. Joe Hinke spoke with the Polk County Police Chief today about the officer's recovery and what led up to him being hit. The Polk County Police Chief tells me on Tuesday one of his officers ran after a suspected thief. He chased him down along these train tracks, cutting through Rock Mart. But then a train came down the tracks, clipped the officer, and that foot chase came to a sudden end. 16-year veteran Polk County Police Officer Andy Anderson is now recovering in the hospital after breaking six ribs, an elbow, shoulder blade, and suffering a concussion and back injuries. Police Chief Kenny Dodd says he is relieved Anderson is alive, and Anderson is too. He, uh, he's thankful that he's still here. He's a wonderful father and husband, and uh, so he, 
he's just thankful that he's still here. Dodd says on Tuesday around noon, Anderson responded to a home on College Street in Rockmart to meet with a burglary victim who shared an image of the suspect. While investigating behind the home and along the nearby train tracks, Anderson noticed a man fitting the description of the suspect. Police have since ID'd the suspect as 18-year-old Jaden Motes, seen here in a previous Polk County mugshot. Motes left a stolen TV and guitar along the train tracks, Dodd says, as Anderson started pursuing him and radioed for backup. He heard the train. He just didn't realize how close to the tracks he was. Uh, we, we call that tunnel vision in law enforcement. You get so focused on the task at hand, you forget about your surroundings. And so the train hit him on the right side of his body and luckily knocked him away from the tracks. Dodd says a plow on the front of the train clipped Anderson, knocking him to the ground. Motes got away, but on the other side of the tracks, police arrested 46-year-old Nancy Borders. Dodd says she was waiting as Motes' getaway driver. Anderson tonight is out of surgery and undergoing further tests. When he will be back on the job is unknown. He's a 16-year veteran and uh, well-respected in our community, works very hard, and yeah, he is... He is eager to get back to work already, and uh, but he's just going to need to take time and recover. And tonight, Jaden Motes is still on the run and wanted. Anyone with information on his whereabouts is asked to call the Polk County Police Department. This flu season has been deadly for our state, but even after it winds down, experts say we may not be in the clear just yet. And don't forget, we are streaming right now on the 11 Alive YouTube channel. As always, you can subscribe and join the conversation in the community section. There's more 11 Alive news in primetime after the break. Hey, subscribe to 11 Alive today. Babe, where are my keys? Uh, where's my lunch? Where's my phone? Hey, where's my blue shirt? Where's my pen? Have you seen it? Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go. Oh, and Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Uh, Auntie. No. <laughs> Auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekday, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boyle Water Advisory. Hyper-local, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So you to do what I say. I'm no, 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 You can assume what you're doing with freedom. Man. Well, Puerto Rico has been through it the past couple of years. Terrified residents are looking for help after enduring two nights of intense earthquakes. At least one person was killed. Within the last 24 hours, President Trump approved FEMA assistance, and it's badly needed, the help, with the territory still recovering after Hurricane Maria tore through two years ago. A very tough few years. Puerto Rico's governor says they haven't had an emergency like this in a century. So you can imagine parents worry when the earthquake hit just after a group of Georgia students arrived there intending to volunteer inside orphanages. Tonight, all 42 students are back home after the school deemed it wasn't safe to stay, and Delta chartered them a flight home. Caitlin Ross at the airport as the students returned. There were flowers and hugs and quite a few tears as the kids from Trinity Christian School came up the escalator. Families waited anxiously to meet the 42 students who flew back from Puerto Rico today. Casey Metcalf told her parents she was never in any danger. We'll be okay. We're not hurt at all. Um, we had generators running the hotel, so we were okay. We had running water. Still, when the news of the massive 6.4 magnitude earthquake broke, many families panicked. Most of the kids, though, say they didn't even realize the quake had hit 
they'd slept right through it. Everybody in my room did not feel it, but all of the adults did, so it was kind of scary when we woke up. The earthquake hit just 24 hours after the students landed, so they saw most places in crisis. Places nearby didn't, couldn't open because they didn't have power, so it was just really hard to see. They were on the trip to volunteer at orphanages in the region, but many of them closed down to the public after the earthquake. We didn't really get to go in many places. The school principal decided it wasn't safe to stay, and Delta was able to schedule a special flight to get the kids and parents back to Atlanta a full week before they were scheduled to return. Everybody was so sweet. They just have the best hearts. While they're happy to be back, they're disappointed they didn't get to volunteer like they had planned. Just to help the kids and be a hope for them. Some of the kids told me on the flight home they were already thinking about ways they could get back next year to help the people of Puerto Rico. After a deadly flu season in Georgia, experts are warning there could be more trouble ahead. The latest State Department of Health report shows 15 people have died from flu in Georgia. Researchers at the University of Virginia say flu levels will probably be high for the next few weeks. But they're also warning there could be a second wave of flu activity. Last year, the CDC says the flu season lasted 21 weeks, the longest since the agency started keeping records. Uh, what a lovely evening it is outside. It doesn't get much better than this in the beginning of January. You know we can see many different extremes here during this time of year, but it is a beautiful night out here in Coweta County in Noonan, the historic courthouse there. The flags are slack. The winds are calm. The skies are clear. It was hardly, hard to find a cloud in the sky today. Uh, in fact, one of our storm trackers, David Stone, posting this beautiful clear sky picture, and you can see the waxing gibbous moon. It's going to be full on the 10th. But boy, it was beautiful this evening, low over the horizon. So let's talk about the changes we're going to be seeing around here as we head into the next couple of days. You can see we have a high pressure in place right now. We have a trough, a low pressure on approach and the developing system. It is quiet right now across most of the nation, but we are anticipating that to change as we head towards the end of the week and into the weekend. So there's our high pressure in charge right now. That's why temperatures were so nice and mild today. 61 was our high after a morning low of 36. So that was well above our average of 52. We were nine degrees above for our high temperature day. Absolutely beautiful. Rainfall looking at pretty good so far this year. We have a surplus of over an inch and it looks like we'll see some pretty significant rain from this first system over the weekend and then another system at the beginning of next week that will bring us an additional rainfall. So temperatures right now nice and beautifully and comfortable, beautifully comfortable, 44 in Rome, 41 in Carrollton. 51 in Atlanta, so it's feeling pretty good out there. And overnight, temperatures will drop down similarly to what we had last night. We should be down in the mid-30s across most of the Atlanta metro area. So a very nice start to our Thursday. So overnight tonight, light winds, mostly clear conditions. And then as we head into Thursday, the clouds start to increase ahead of our next front. So as those clouds increase, we'll likely start to see some showers uh, pop up on our Friday. Light to start, widely scattered or I should say few and far between, becoming more widespread later on in the evening and overnight Friday night into Saturday. And then we'll be watching this next system on approach. So that's when we'll uh, be wanting to be on top of the situation before it happens on Saturday night. Of course, we have uh, a lot of uh, viewers expected to be watching the football game. It's the Vikings and who else, Chris? 49ers. It was, I should know that having lived in San Francisco all that time. But so we're concerned about this system approaching during that game, particularly and into the evening hours. So we're clear and quiet for now. Showers on Friday with that severe potential on Saturday during the playoff game between the 49ers and the Vikings. So we have a, a put on our screen here a QR code. So if you aim your camera right now at this code, it'll help you download the 11 Alive app and you can easily set up notifications to get for severe thunderstorms warnings or even tornado warnings. There is that potential as the system nears us on Saturday afternoon and evening. So aim your camera here and you can get that app and be prepared before the storm moves in. And you can see that severe potential goes up. We have an enhanced chance across much of the Mississippi River Valley on Friday and then that storm advances. And right now the Storm Prediction Center putting us in that slight risk area. Um, but this enhanced area, which is a three out of level five chance of seeing um, severe storms is coming very, very close to us. So we just need to be prepared. 
when and if any severe weather develops on our Saturday and the 11 Alive app will help you stay ahead of the storm. So on our Thursday, beautiful day, good day to get prepared for what could come in over the weekend. Friday, we have the showers around. And then once we get into Saturday, we see those storms moving on in on our Saturday uh, afternoon and evening. 90% chance of that. So we do expect to be very busy here at 11 Alive on Saturday afternoon and evening with that threat of severe. Sunday looks pretty good. We should clear out pretty quickly, but it looks like more heavy rain potentially next week. So last night, Georgia taking on 14th ranked Kentucky. Fun game to watch. Dogs led for a while. They were celebrating at halftime. I think the basketball tonight, this time the Jackets are, are taking on royalty. Alex Glaze is at Georgia Tech where there is a buzz ahead of tonight's game against the Duke Blue Devils. <laughs> Been a minute. Yeah, Jeff, a, a really big game tonight against Duke. A lot of people really excited about not only, you know, Duke coming here, but about this Georgia Tech team as well. I'm here with Marvin Lewis, Associate Athletic Director here at Tech. Uh, a lot of excitement about this Tech team. What is what has the buzz been like on campus? Oh, it's been great. Um, first week of campus, or first week of uh, school starting, uh, the semester is getting going, students are back, and they're ready to go. They're ready and willing to see this team. And basketball being relevant again, not only just here, but just in the state in, in general. Uh, you know, you guys have a sellout here tonight. As a former player, what does that do for you? Does that give you that little extra extra boost? Always, always. The crowd definitely plays a part in the game. You try your best to keep your emotions down and, and, and treat things business as usual. But anytime you can get a top five team coming into your place, sellout crowd, you're going to be excited. And I'm going to ask you too, just as a former player, when you are coming into this game, coming off of a win against North Carolina, does that give you that extra confidence that maybe you would need in a game like this? No question about it. Um, you start, again, a new season, ACC competition. You beat Carolina. You got another chance to beat a blue blood in the ACC. It's a great opportunity, and our, our folks are really excited. All right, well, we're excited, too. I'm going to be here tonight, and we're going to have a reaction from this game online after the game. Tip-off is set for 9 p.m. Send it back to you. Big question today, is Georgia one of the worst states to raise a family? A lot of you had plenty to say about this new study. Details next. I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boyle Water Advisory. Hyper local, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his <laughs> way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So you to do what I say. I'm no, 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 You can assume it. Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta. From movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A-Scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, Ooh, did I not text you? All right. Ah, I sent my drafts. That's my bad. So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm. Oh, I, I consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah, I've nice got guy. the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Jess. I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish last. Oh, Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Right, right. About I mean, that. Well, reward would be... Slimming. Slimming down. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. A little water yes. in my cup. And and beautiful skin. Well, you well, know, I even too. more beautiful skin. You know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. I'm not gonna be able to sit next to you in a few months.
This is Just Into the Newsroom. Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg says she is cancer-free. She now has survived cancer four times. She's 86 years of age, late in 2018. Uh, Justice Ginsburg was treated for a cancerous growth in her lungs, also causing her to miss the oral arguments in January of last year. Justice Ginsburg also diagnosed with pancreatic cancer in August of last year. Again, she's 86, the oldest justice on the Supreme Court. She's led an amazing life. She is always hard-charging. She was appointed in 1993 by President Clinton. The state of Georgia is known for many things. You know, you think about Atlanta and the Civil Rights Movement. You think about all the great athletes that we've had through here, the arts. The Atlanta Symphony is one of the greats in the world. So much to be thankful for and to be appreciative of. It certainly is, but there is a new report out that has some residents here fired up. It ranks Georgia among the top worst 10 states to raise a family. Doesn't sound good. The study was conducted by Wallet Hub. It took in a number of things into consideration, including family salary, the number of playgrounds, even local divorce rates. In conclusion, Wallet Hub ranked Georgia the ninth worst state in the nation to raise a family. Now, other states at the bottom of the list, Mississippi, Louisiana, in West Virginia. Now, the best state to raise a family, according to the study, is Minnesota. The worst was New Mexico. Hey, Wallet Hub, get out of town. Agree. <laughs> get out of here. We don't know how you've based all of that. We like it here just fine. We Thank do. You. Elaine says she understands the study, but she doesn't see a lot of people moving from our part of the world to the north. It's usually the other way around. Richard loves his neighborhood. He says his neighborhood is safe, the quality of education top-notch, and if he was raising a family, East Cobb would be a no-brainer. And we want to hear from you. What do you think of the report? We've already told you what Jennifer and I think of it. Not we much. Do. Let us know. You can find the story on the 11 Alive Facebook page. All right, coming up, a burglar taking his sweet time. What happens when this man breaks into a Taco Bell and decides it's time to relax? Mm. Yeah, right there on the floor. Mm -hmm. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. They it are is. fun. They're and they're convenient. Fun. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. That's I just feel the like thing. they have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a new yeah. way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together, our voices grow. Together we come alive, amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together we are unstoppable. Together we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows hey, and they would, you know, they yeah. would wait the next week, you're all, oh, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Atlanta, almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Alive's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man, it's the heart of the South. And it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home from different backgrounds, languages, and religions. And who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and Southern hospitality. 
Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once in Olympic City, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king. Wednesday night, we continue to follow the very latest on the tensions which have been rising certainly with Iran over the weeks. President Trump today assuring Americans that no one was hurt when the missiles were launched about a dozen ballistics last night at two Iraqi military bases where U.S. troops were stationed. Iran's supreme leader saying it was retaliation for the U.S. drone strike that killed its top military leader. NBC's Alice Barr report, reports that both the U.S. and Iran reportedly are looking to de-escalate the crisis. Today, a step back from the brink. With the news, no Americans were hurt in Iran's missile strikes on Iraqi bases housing U.S. forces. President Trump is playing down the attacks. Iran appears to be standing down which is a good thing for all parties concerned and a very good thing for the world. The president's previous tough talk of military action shifting to a vow for punishing new economic sanctions that will remain. Until Iran changes its behavior. While saying he wants peace, the president began his statement with these words. Iran will never be allowed to have a nuclear weapon. And just hours after Iran's supreme leader called the missile strikes a slap in the face for the killing of its top general, the president again defended his decision to take out Qasem Soleimani. We took decisive action to stop a ruthless terrorist from threatening American lives. Top administration officials briefing lawmakers today on the intelligence behind the drone strike on Soleimani. Reaction mainly falling down party lines. Uh, th this was a, a clear and present danger. Utterly unpersuaded about any evidence about the imminence of a threat. But notably, two Republican senators sharply critical. Was probably the worst briefing I've seen, at least on a military issue. They have justified the killing of an Iranian general as being something that Congress gave them permission to do in 2002. That is absurd. That's an insult. Both now say that while they support the president, they would also support a war powers resolution. Democrats plan to bring to the floor tomorrow to limit President Trump's military actions in Iran. Our digital team is working around the clock, updating the latest on this situation with Iran. You can download the 11 Alive News app for breaking news alerts sent straight to your phone. Oh, we're talking about some changes as we head into the next 24 hours or so. We're looking at the clouds rolling in on Thursday and then potential for severe storms as we head into the weekend. So high pressure is in place right now. That's keeping us nice and mild and clear for the night. And then we're watching a system that hasn't really developed yet, but we do think the ingredients will come together as we head in through our Saturday afternoon and evening. And that's when we have the potential to see some severe storms. So quiet for now. And then we'll see those changes heading in our direction once we get into our Friday and Saturday. So the next 12 hours, nice clear skies, temperatures overnight getting down into the 30s, much like we were today. And then we'll see the clouds roll in during the afternoon tomorrow. And then that possibility for some severe storms on our Saturday. So coming up, we'll time it out hour by hour and let you know what to expect and give you some ways in which you may be able to keep your family safer. Sam, thank you. A wanted man grabbed a computer from a Taco Bell, but not before grabbing a bite to eat and getting some shut eye first. This bizarre story tops your speed feed tonight. Gwinnett County Police are looking for a man who crawled through the drive through window at a Taco Bell off Sugarloaf Parkway on Christmas Day. Before taking anything, he decided to cook himself a meal and was even caught napping by security cameras right there on the floor. About three hours later, he woke up, grabbed a laptop and got out of there. And it's only then that the alarm went off. Gwinnett County Police are looking for anyone with information that can help track him down. A Henry County DJ facing more charges tonight. Malcolm Rhodes is already accused of sexual battery against a teenage boy. Police now say they think he molested another minor. Rhodes is well known in Henry County and in Coweta County. His social media pages shows that he has DJed field trips, pool parties, and even hosted a nighttime glow party for kids under 16. 
A mother arrested, accused of making threats on Facebook after she says her child was bullied at school. Police say Sierra Oliver posted a video on Facebook threatening to hurt students and staff at Gainesville Middle School. Police say she also had a warrant out for her arrest in Cobb County for assault with a weapon. Well, you probably remember this one. It was a freak accident. A UGA sprinter impaled, impaled by a javelin while at track practice, puncturing his lung and then putting his track career on hold. And now here we are. We're eight months after that horrific accident. And Elijah Godwin is making a comeback, a strong one. Nick Sturdivant has more on his amazing recovery in the weeks of whatever happened to Yeah, so you can see one by my armpit and there's one under that. While the scars are still visible, mentally and spiritually. I needed that, like, spiritual part of my life, that balance. So, because I feel like that's what helped more than anything else, like, get through this whole process, like, to be able to get back on the track, to be able to, like, start training again. And Elijah Godwin says he's in a better place. The sophomore sprinter has been more determined than ever to compete again, doing intense rehab, focusing on his speed, and endurance. In August, he started back on the track and he is um, back to his pre injury speeds. The physical part of it, that's really like the easy part. Like, I really don't mind like doing none of the like exercises that I gotta do to get my body right. So my rehab isn't like separate from like training, it's like combined. So as I'm rehabbing, I'm also like getting better and faster, stronger. He's set to run in his first meet since his injury Saturday at Clemson University. And to think, less than a year ago, we first met Elijah in the hospital. May 2019, the UGA freshman accidentally backed into a javelin while doing a backward sprint drill on the infield. He suffered a collapsed lung, but successfully made it through surgery at Piedmont Athens Regional Medical Center. He's a fighter. Elijah said what made the recovery easier was the support he got from family, friends, and people he didn't know. It just felt so, like, genuine. A lot of people just was like, you got, you, you would think, like, everybody just want to see what's going on, but no, they really just want to know if you're okay. So I tried to reach out, reach out back to everybody else who, anybody who messaged me, I tried to, like, message them back. Now, a lot of his concentration is centered towards Saturday's meet. Just to be out there to run in less than a year of your injury, is amazing. So no matter what happens, whether it goes good, bad, I'm just, uh, I appreciate the opportunity to be out there. Wow, what a terrific story. Elijah will compete in the 400 and 200 meter dash at Clemson coming up on Saturday, as Nick said. And also, he says he wants to continue to inspire people and says he would like to be a counselor one day to help others. Dollar General, or at least some version of it, may be coming to Midtown Atlanta. It's a new concept called DGX, and it's more like a corner convenience store. It has a bigger health and beauty section and more frozen and refrigerated food options. But not everyone in Midtown is happy or excited about this one. More than 600 people have signed an online petition saying the DGX store is one of several like it near the corner of 7th and Peachtree. Dollar General says the city has to give final approval to the project. It hopes to get an answer in the next few weeks. Well, you're probably seeing a lot of Australian brush fire fundraisers online right about now, but how much do you know and how much do you know about which ones are legitimate? Our Verify team has the answer for you next. Air Atlanta Speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows hey, and they cliffhangers. would cliffhangers. You know, they yeah. would wait the next week. You're oh, all, what's going to happen to the six million dollar man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays five to seven a.m. only on Eleven Alive. Atlanta, almost six million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm Eleven Alive's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man, it's the heart of the South, and it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home, from different backgrounds, languages, and religions, and who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot, full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. 
Once in Olympic City, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film Hawks' Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us. Use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from 5 to 7 on The Morning Rush on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Babe, where are my keys? Uh, where's my lunch? Where's my phone? Hey, where's my blue shirt? Where's my pen? Have you seen it? Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire yeah. week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, <laughs> on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go. Oh, away. And Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from barbecue. Uh, Auntie. No. <laughs> Auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. <laughs> I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. In Australia, where wildfires continue to burn, firefighters are using a break in the weather to shore up their defenses. The blazes are expected to flare up again within days when scorching temperatures are expected to return. The fires have taken a bigger toll on the country's wildfire. Hundreds of millions of wild animals and livestock believed to have been killed. A couple of estimates put it at one billion that we have seen today. The Australian Army is busy treating burned and injured animals at Kangaroo Island Wildlife Park. More than 110 Army reservists are working with local authorities to try and help many of these creatures. Many of us see the devastating images coming out of Australia, and we want to help. There's all kinds of fundraisers being shared online, including uh, about 3,000 GoFundMe sites. But are all of them legitimate? Adam Long goes with our Verify team, and he shows us what to watch for if you want to help. Now, anyone can start a fundraiser for just about anything. GoFundMe guarantees, though, if you donate to a fraudulent campaign, you are eligible for a refund. Still, we want to make sure that you know the red flags, what to look out for. First, you want to look to see how the campaign organizer is related to the recipient. For instance, we found several organizers raising money for a nonprofit, like the Australian Red Cross. Instead, you can donate directly to the nonprofit, cutting out the GoFundMe middleman and avoiding any attempt to fraud. Second, you want to look to see the purpose of the campaign and a plan for how the funds will be used. Be wary of any photos that show gruesome or emotional photos, but don't offer any clear plan. And then third, check to see whether the recipient is in control of withdrawing the money. If there isn't a clear path for the funds to reach those affected, you might want to rethink giving. Now, if you see a charity you haven't heard of, make sure it's an official nonprofit before giving. You can search Australia's charity database at acnc.gov.au slash charity. We've shared ways that you can donate on 11alive.com. You can also follow the very latest developments from Australia by downloading the 11 Alive news app. Well, what a pleasant evening it has been all the way around, all across North Georgia from Blue Ridge, where they still have some of their holiday lights up and temperatures are nice and mild. Here, all the way down towards uh, Coweta County, where Bill Honia took this picture uh, earlier today at sunset. And you can see just how calm it is. I mean, the water looks like glass there as the sun sets below the horizon. So we're looking at a very nice next 24 hours or so, and then things are going to start going a bit downhill. So high pressure is in charge right now. There you can see it across the southeast. And we're watching a system take shape. It still really hasn't developed. 
that all of our models is showing, are, are showing us signs that there will be a strong system developing as we head towards the weekend. So for right now, we'll enjoy it and we'll enjoy tomorrow. Most of tomorrow looks fabulous. We'll start to see a few clouds roll in during the day, but other than that, looking really good. Temperatures the last 20 hours where we saw them get up into the low 60s today after being in the uh, mid 30s. So we ended up seeing a very nice afternoon shape up and we'll see warm temperatures ahead of this system. Now, right now we're looking at 51 in Atlanta, 41 in Canton, and 41 in Dalton, 34 in Blairsville. So it is clear and quiet for now. We'll see those showers start to move in well in advance of the system on Friday. They're not going to be severe. We don't need to worry about them, but keep your umbrella handy just in case, especially late in the day on Friday. And then we have that severe potential that will likely develop on our Saturday. Now, we've been talking about this for a few days now. A Storm Prediction Center ex expecting a bit of an outbreak starting out here across the Mississippi River Valley and as early as Friday they've already given an enhanced chance to see some uh, widespread severe storms across the Mississippi River Valley and then that system moves in our direction so by the time we get into Saturday our chances for severe weather will be going up right now level two out of five levels for us here in West Georgia so that's why we want you to be prepared and we are going to put a QR code, QR code easy for me to say here on the screen and you can simply aim your phone at this QR code and it'll help you download Load the 11 Alive app and you can simply set those notifications. It's very easy to do for severe weather warnings as we get into Saturday afternoon and evening uh, and things ramp up. Sometimes that's too late to really get a plan in place. So this is a way to kind of put a plan of action in place for you here. So as we head into Thursday, we'll start to see those winds out of the northeast. The clouds will increase. Getting into Friday, a few pesky little showers, nothing to write home about. As we head into the evening, I think the chance for those showers expanding going up during the evening hours and especially overnight. So this is as we head into Saturday and notice widespread rain and then the line of storms coming in late in the day. So this is around six o'clock moving into northwest Georgia. If this timing holds, we're still quite a few days out. So the timing could change. But as I switch to the GFS, the American model, you can see that the heavier rain starts moving in right around dinner time across northwest Georgia. That's when we expect to see the severe potential really ramping up. So if you can have a plan in place, a place to take shelter, if we do see any severe storms, and we can't rule out that threat for some tornadoes as well. So we'll be watching for that potential. Doesn't mean that we'll absolutely see severe thunderstorms or any with rotation uh, that could cause a tornado, but we'll certainly be on the lookout for it as we head into Saturday afternoon and evening and we just would like for you to be ready to take shelter in a secure location if that does happen and of course a mobile home is never a secure location so you kind of think ahead where you may be able to go at this point so widespread rain we're seeing it on our weekend about an inch and a half in the wettest spots and we could end up seeing five day rain totals here in the two to four inch range as we head into next week on Monday Tuesday and in the, the first part of Wednesday so Thursday looks Looks like we have a few clouds around here, but looking good. Friday, just a few pesky showers, a 60% chance, a 90% chance of rain on Saturday. And many of these uh, storms could end up being severe. And then once we get into Sunday, we clear it out quickly, but more rain is going to be heading in at the beginning of next week. All right, folks, you know what time it is. You see your screen. It is time for a hump day edition of the A-Scene. And guess what? We have a casting call roundup for you. I'm trying to get you pizzed in 2020 and cut me my 10%. From Doom Patrol to the Underground Railroad, all these casting calls can be found on our Facebook group. So let's kick off with comedian turned social media star turned actor DC Youngfly. He's starring in a new movie filming here in Atlanta where he plays a drug dealer. So <laughs> here's where you come in. They need someone to play his right-hand man, specifically a his Hispanic male for this gangster role, ages 20 to 34, and you must be able to speak in a Spanish accent. Filming goes down January 11th. And finally, Amazon's The Underground Railroad is now casting children. Specifically, they need 10 Caucasian children, boys and girls, for this American alternate history drama web television limited series, okay? It's directed by my guy, Barry Jenkins. He actually also directed uh, Moonlight. Something tells me this may be for a classroom scene. Filming takes place January 23rd, 27th and 28th and of course it's paid all the information on our a scene Facebook group the best sports scene across the nation hey look the South has something to say 
you won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks' Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us, use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from five to seven on the Morning Rush on 11 Alive. Televised newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Babe, where are my keys? Uh, where's my lunch? Where's my phone? Hey, where's my blue shirt? Where's my pen? Have you seen it? Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. <laughs> It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go. Oh, and Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Uh, Auntie. No. Auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. <laughs> I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekday, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boyle Water Advisory. Hyper-local, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So you just do what I say. No, 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 You can assume what you're doing with freedom. Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta. From movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A-Scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, Ooh, did I not text you? All right. We are following breaking news now in Gwinnett County where police are investigating a homicide at a business in Buford. It happened at the O'Reilly's Auto Parts on Hamilton Mill Road. That's near I-85. No details have been released about what happened or who the victim may be. We have a crew headed to the scene. We'll bring you a live update a little bit later in this broadcast. UGA quarterback Jake Fromm has made his decision. He is giving up his senior season and going into the NFL draft. He announced that decision on social media earlier this afternoon. Here's some of what he said. I would like to offer my sincerest thank you to UGA. Thank you to Coach Smart for believing in a scared 18-year-old who got handed the ball in South Bend, Indiana. I've decided that it is time for me to take on the next challenge in my life and pursue my lifelong dream of playing in the NFL. Go dogs and God bless. So let's take a look at Fromm's history at the University of Georgia. He committed out of Houston County in 2016 as a five-star, flipping from Alabama. His first start was at Notre Dame after Jacob Eason was injured in the season opener. The dogs went on to beat Notre Dame, and Fromm was now a national name. He played in three SEC championships, helped the dogs rally in the Rose Bowl, and had a national championship appearance. So a fantastic career, a great dog there. Now, there have already been some dominoes falling since his decision. One of his offensive linemen is now transferring. But is this really about Jake Fromm or is it about an amputated pinky finger? We'll have much more on that coming up tonight at 9. Well, the wait is finally over. We now know that Jake Fromm is actually going to the NFL. It was kind of surprising to some people who figured that this was a guy who wanted to come back and enjoy his senior year, try to lead the dogs to victory. Everybody knows what a major competitor Jake Fromm is. They expected him to try to come back and win a title. 
But if you noticed, when day after day passed and there was no announcement from Fromm that he was returning, you had to think that things were headed towards the NFL, and that's exactly what he announced on Twitter earlier today. We got wind of it uh, a little bit earlier in the day that uh, that was the most likely outcome. He announced it, and now he's going there. Uh, a lot of people say, well, why skip out on your senior year? Why not come back and try to improve your draft chances? I don't know that he can improve his draft chances. Even if he were to do really well next year, even if he were to lead the dogs to a national title, I don't know that it would move him up any higher on any NFL board. He's got three years of tape. I don't know there's much that he could prove to the NFL and has always been his dream to go to the NFL. So just like Andrew Thomas, DeAndre Swift, Isaiah Wilson, Solomon Kinley, uh, Jake Fromm is headed to the NFL. Good luck to them all. All right, ahead for you tonight, medical breakthrough. A newly released report shows fewer people are dying from cancer. What else that, rep that report found ahead? Atlanta icon, ever-changing, always interesting. The Crock Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pristy, eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel it's good vibe. When you vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate. We just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're going to get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must-see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. They are fun. <laughs> they're and they're convenient. Fun. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. That's I just feel the like thing. they have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a yeah. new way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. So what's the best part about Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together, our voices grow. Together, we come alive. Amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together, we are unstoppable. Together, we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old clip? Alert for you tonight, more people than ever are winning the battle against cancer. That's one of the key takeaways from the American Cancer Society's annual report on cancer rates and trends. But within that report, news is still mixed. There's been a, a sharp uptick in survival rates of lung cancer. Progress against some other forms of cancer still is not going that well. NBC Sarah Dolloff explains. A new milestone on the cancer fighting front. Death rates declined 29 percent in 26 years. According to a new report by the American Cancer Society, that figure includes a 2.2% decrease from 2016 to 2017, the largest one-year decline of cancer deaths ever reported. It's highly significant that we're seeing such a tremendous drop, which means we're getting better at treating certain cancers. Mortality rates of lung cancer, the leading cause of cancer deaths, are down significantly, 4% per year over the past five years. Melanoma death rates saw an even sharper decline. We have drugs that stimulate the patient's bodies to kill their tumor cells. Overall, the American Cancer Society estimates nearly 3 million lives have been saved, roughly the population of Chicago. 
means we're making good progress uh, in reducing the cancer burden. But the news isn't all positive. Health experts note white cancer patients have slightly higher five-year survival rates than African Americans. And progress is slowed when it comes to colon, breast, and prostate cancer. We have a ways to go. We still need to develop better therapeutics, um, better diagnostics. They encourage individuals to do their part with smart lifestyle choices, including regular exercise, cancer screenings, limiting alcohol, and stopping, or better yet, never starting smoking. All right, folks, it's almost 9 o'clock. We have a lot coming up in the 11, uh, 11 Alive News Prime Time. We're going to continue following reports of the Iranian rocket attacks in Baghdad's Green Zone just hours after President Trump addressed the nation, assuring America that everything is okay following Iran's missile attacks on the U.S. bases in Iraq the night before. And do you live in the richest county in Georgia? A metro Atlanta area is making double the national average, and there are a few reasons why. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. Our great American forces are prepared for anything. We are a safer world because a brutal terrorist is gone from this planet. This is a reckless president putting the lives of American troops at risk. The civilized world must send a clear and unified message to the Iranian regime. Those days are over. After what seemed like a brief easing of tensions today, reports of more apparent rocket fire in Iraq tonight near a U.S. embassy. Iraq's military says two rockets hit Baghdad's heavily fortified green zone tonight. Now, this houses government buildings, including the U.S. embassy. Iraqi police tells uh, NBC News at least one of those rockets fell about 100 yards away from the U.S. embassy, causing a fire. As of now, there are no reports of casualties. Now, this latest attack comes just hours after President Donald Trump reassured the American public earlier this morning following a pair of airstrikes at coalition bases in Iraq last night. Iran appears to be standing down, which is a good thing for all parties concerned and a very good thing for the world. Well, satellite images released show the extent of the damage at one of Iraqi at the Iraqi bases there, but the president says no Americans were hurt. Iranian forces say last night's attacks were in retaliation for the U.S. attack that killed Revolutionary Guard Commander General Qasem Soleimani. President Trump has uh, vowed to keep pressure on Iran, promising peace through strength. He also vowed to impose new sanctions on Iran. But some are questioning if that's really going to work, if it's going to happen. 11 Alive's Elwin Lopez explains. And after the president spoke, we saw posts online from people wondering what's left here to sanction. Now, before all of this happened, the Trump administration had already reimposed U.S. sanctions that were eased under the 2015 nuclear deal. But there is speculation that they could be expanded on Iran's financial, energy, shipping, and military sectors. I asked Dr. Alan Fromhertz, who's the director of the Middle East Studies Center at Georgia State, his reaction to the president's comments about the sanctions. I think, if anything, the sanctions just allow the regime uh, an, an scapegoat for its own internal issues. I think it cite the sanctions as the reason why the taxes on gas have gone up or gas prices have gone up with Iran, or cite the sanctions as the reason why there's economic problems with Iran. All right, that was Owen Lopez reporting for us tonight. By the way, the sanctions can also target Iranian officials and their families with penalties, which include freezing assets and adding travel bans. Well, tonight, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi announcing a vote on a war powers resolution to limit President Trump's military actions against Iran. Pelosi says the Trump administration's killing of Somali endangered service members, diplomats, and others creating tensions with Iran. The vote is expected sometime tomorrow. We reached out to every member of Georgia's congressional delegation for their response to President Trump's remarks today. On Twitter, Republican Congressman Doug Collins wrote, President Trump's pursuit of peace through strength is exactly what America needs. While fellow Republican Representative Tom Graves shared this statement saying, quote, today President Trump made it clear to the Iranian regime, your days of terror are over. Democratic Congressman Hank Johnson also saying he's glad the president stuck to the script and did not humiliate Iran. You can read more reactions from lawmakers on 11alive.com. You can hear President Trump's full remarks as well on the 11 Alive app. That is also where you can find more analysis and background on the conflict. And coming up in about 10 minutes, our Verify team examines photos and videos claiming to be about the airstrike there in Iran. 
I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers, as we have been doing every night here at 9 o'clock. I'm with you live on the ATL, as well as my phone right here. You see it propped up on the screen. Um, I'm doing a Facebook Live, talking to a lot of our followers here. And uh, the subject we're talking about is the severe weather threat as we head into the weekend. I'm going to break it down for you guys coming up in just a little bit, but if you want to have be part of that conversation, uh, join us on my Facebook page, Chris Holcomb 11 Alive. Um, we have some folks, uh, Sarah Allen says she's excited about the behind the scenes stuff. We have other folks um, talking about the volume on here as well. And a lot of folks asking specifically about their area and what type of weather they're going to get for this weekend. So we'll talk about that over the next 30 minutes. Look at these temperatures around North Georgia, though, right now. You know, we got up into the low 60s for a high today, but we are cooling down quickly with that clear sky. We're down to 48 now, 37 in Carrollton, 36 in LaGrange, and we're going to see these temperatures continue to fall tonight. They'll be in the 30s after midnight and then upper to mid 30s in some spots early in the morning. And then tomorrow starting off with sunshine, but the clouds start to build in later in the day and then the rain moves in. So more clouds Thursday, the rain returns Friday, and we are talking about the chance for strong storms developing on Saturday. I'm going to go a little more in depth on that in my Facebook Live, and we'll have more for you on that coming up in just a few minutes. As All well. right, Chris, we'll see you in a couple of minutes, sir. Well, there's another Metro Atlanta company has been spewing the cancer causing gas ethylene oxide into the air. Sterilization Services of Georgia is on Fulton Industrial Boulevard in Atlanta and has been fined $3,000 a day this month until they install new fill to limit the emissions of ethylene oxide. And they're the third company in the Atlanta area found to be leaking this, this toxin. It happened this year, including Sterigenics in Smyrna and BD in Covington. Elevated levels of ethylene oxide have been found in all of those communities. The companies use the gas to sterilize medical equipment. Tonight, a major update in the Atlanta public schools cheating scandal. One of the first former educators sent to prison in the case was just granted parole. Tamara Cotman is one of 11 former teachers and administrators convicted of racketeering. They're accused of changing students' answers on standardized tests and pocketing performance bonuses. Cotman turned herself in back in October 2018 after she lost her appeal to the state Supreme Court. State officials say Cotman was eligible for parole in September but was released on January 2nd. When state investigators revealed a decade ago that thousands of students in the public education system had been cheated out of an education, there was community outrage. Several Atlanta public school educators were eventually prosecuted for changing those test scores to make it look like the kids were doing better in class than they actually were. More than 10 years later, an investigation by the reveals Faith Abube has found the programs that were meant to help those students catch up have largely missed their target. I keep everything. <laughs> and these long faded report cards. When they were small. Two of Erica's children, Christopher and Eric, were in elementary school when she found out they were among the more than 3,000 students identified as victims of the Atlanta public school cheating scandal. The numbers didn't add up. They were not on grade level. How far back would you say they were? At least two years behind. Local leaders made promises. They would make the kids whole. One of those promises turned into a program called Target 2021. The number represents the year the last impacted students would graduate from high school. For the past year, Dina Rogers has been in charge of the APS program. Ten years later, how are these students coping? They're learning. Um, they are thriving. But a new report by Georgia State concludes that after five semesters, the program has had no effect on students' grades. And in some cases, Target 2021 students had slightly lower scores. Overall, we may not be seeing those huge numbers, but we have individual students and schools that are benefiting from the program. So you're happy with what the program is doing? I'm happy. Can we do better? Yes. The reveal has also uncovered there was another program. Redemption Academy was to target the other 3,500 students who had already graduated APS when the cheating came to light. But we found the Fulton County DA's office never even got it off the ground as it promised. We did not realize how really difficult it was. District Attorney Paul Howard says they needed $30 million and they couldn't find the people they were supposed to help. Some of those children might be in jail. Some of them might not have ever gotten a job because of the poor educations they received. Do you take any responsibility in that? Oh, yeah. I, I wish that I could have done a better job. It is clear that those students suffered. Something should be done. For now, a failed promise. 
a missed target, and no redemption. The data might not show it, but Rogers says parents and students are satisfied with the extra help their kids were getting in and outside the classroom because of Target 2021. But before I was making C's, now I haven't had a C in high school at all. My future is going to be successful. And a lot of parents love that the program is addressing more than just the kids' educational needs. They've even partnered with community schools that will help with everything from emergency rent assistance, hot food, and other things that the kids need at home. All right, straight ahead, hot star. Trey Young donated $10,000 to help cancel more than $1 million in medical debt. And he's not the only one helping Metro Atlanta communities in this extended season of giving. And folks, don't forget, we're streaming right now on the 11 Alive YouTube channel. Subscribe, join the conversation in the community section. And we've got more 11 Alive news prime time after the break. <laughs> Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And, of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go to waste. Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Auntie. No. Auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. <laughs> I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekday, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boyle Water Advisory. Hyper-local, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. See, I just do what I say. I'm no, 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 You can assume what you're doing with freedom. Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta. From movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. Welcome back, everyone. You know, claims about yesterday's airstrikes against U.S. bases in Iraq are taking over social media. So our National Verified team decided to break down the most viral post. Here's Jason Puckett. Social media can be an amazing tool for getting out quick information, but it also lets fake or misleading info out as well. Easy example, this tweet, shared thousands of times before it was taken down, initially claimed that 20 U.S. troops had died amid 60-plus missile strikes. That's false. President Trump himself confirmed there were no U.S. casualties or injuries, and the Pentagon's official statement said there were more than a dozen missiles, not 60. Then there's this image of a missile taking off. It was shared by the FARS news agency and other sites as an image of the strike, but it's not. This is from 2017. Here it is in a Guardian article about an Iranian strike on ISIS in Syria. Now, this photo was shared with claims that it was Ayatollah Khomeini overseeing the strike Tuesday. It's not. A reverse image search shows that it was from 2014, and an Iranian press release from that time shows it was Khomeini overseeing a presentation by the Aerospace Force of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard in 2014. It wasn't just photos and false info either. Videos have been and are still being shared. This video claims to be eyewitness video of Iranian missile barrage on American bases. Folks, this video has been removed from numerous sites and it keeps popping back up. Bottom line, it's false. It's from May and Qatar last year. Here it is posted on military.com. These claims all have fake info, adding confusion and tension to a serious situation. And it works because they use real photos. They aren't photoshopped, they're just not from this event. Accounts will purposefully take unrelated material and make it seem like it's real and relevant in order to mislead. And since they use hashtags like breaking or Iran war, they pop up for anyone who searches. That's why it's important to take a second and look at the source before you share. This video, for instance, was posted by a Twitter user with 49 followers who joined Twitter Twitter this week. That's not a reputable source of information. Seeing others like this, send us an email. We'll check them out. Good information there. By the way, our 24-7 digital team will bring you the latest updates on the situation with Iran. Just check 11alive.com for more perspective and analysis. 
Good evening, everybody. 913 coming up on 914 on a Wednesday night. We are talking to you live on TV now, as well as you can see my phone right here. I'm doing a Facebook Live. We have almost 400 people on Facebook Live right now as we are talking about the weather that we're dealing with now and also the storm risk as we head into the weekend. So let's get right down to it. I want to break it down for everyone right now. Take a look at the temperatures that we have around North Georgia at this hour, and we have uh, the temperatures that are rather chilly right now at about 48 degrees. We're 39 though in um, Peachtree City, 36 in LaGrange, more 40s here on the north side, 34 though in the Blairsville area. So cool air all around and it's going to stay cool tonight. In the morning we start off around 38 degrees here and in the afternoon getting up to around 62. So a chilly morning, but it'll be warm once we get into the afternoon above average by about 10 degrees and we will see a few more clouds that are going to start building in. We'll have that sunshine that's early in the morning and then clouds gradually build in during the day, but we're not concerned about any rain that will be moving our way. So we want to get you prepared and set you up for this severe weather potential moving into the weekend. So I'm going to show you the forecast track while I'm doing that. You're going to see a QR code that's going to pop up here on your screen right there. And what you can do, put your phone into camera mode mode and aim it at that QR code on your screen, and that will help you to download the 11 Alive app that will prepare you for these storms and give you the opportunity to set notifications to get alerts if any severe weather occurs, as well as if we go on live with severe weather coverage and you're in your basement or something away from the TV, you will have the app ready to continue seeing our coverage. So that app is right there. Uh, aim that at the screen so you can see uh, what, to, what to do to get that 11 Alive app. Now tomorrow, Notice the clouds. They're going to be building into the area and no rain, though, during the day tomorrow, just the clouds that will be increasing. And then on Friday, we'll see some scattered showers that will be moving into our area. I'm not concerned about storms for Friday. It's going to be on Saturday when we see more rain moving in. Look at that southerly flow that moves our way. And as that moves our way, it's going to be really warm. That builds up the instability. We have shear in place as this next system, the front moves our way. So we're thinking later in the afternoon, Saturday, oh, I know that just disappeared, but we'll have this area north Northwest Georgia uh, late afternoon Saturday into Alabama, moving into West Georgia during the evening hours. So the severe weather threat for Friday is out to the west with that enhanced risk. That's level three out of five. But once we get into Saturday, uh, the area that would be equivalent to a slight risk or a level two out of five comes into Atlanta with the highest risks over into parts of Alabama and Mississippi. The threats possible damaging winds, tornadoes possible and flash flooding. Now the tornado risk is not a guarantee that we'll see tornadoes but it is a big possibility. We'll keep fine tuning this as we go through the next few days. So Friday, the rain, Saturday, the storms, a break on Sunday, then more moisture returns coming in from the south for Monday and Tuesday and even on Wednesday and temperatures. We're not cooling down after these storms move through on Saturday. We are stay, going to stay warm in the uh, 60s here, even into much of next week. Hawk star Trey Young is helping out the Atlanta community in a big way. He donated $10,000 to help cancel more than $1 million in medical debt. The relief group RIP Medical Debt says this will help nearly 600 families in Metro Atlanta. And another massive donation, this one, $10 million worth to help Kennesaw State's Honor College. Michigan billionaire John Brown and his wife Rosemary is behind the largest donation from a single donor in the university's history. Rosemary Brown retired after a 30-year career as a math teacher and is an active member of KSU's Honors College Advisory Board. Okay, you know, we told you about this uh, news earlier about Jake Fromm declaring for the NFL draft. Well, soon after, our UGA insider broke that Cade Mays was entering the transfer portal, so it sounds like he wants to play at Tennessee where his dad was a captain and his brother just enrolled. But now there's more to this story. We're learning this tonight, and it involves Cade's father's pinky finger being amputated at an event. We're going to bring you UGA Insider with the very latest. UJSports.com broke the news earlier today that the Mays family is suing the University of Georgia and a chair manufacturer. Apparently, when the Mays family was down on a visit on December 15th, 2017, they were at the UGA Gala, which is a big event where they honor all the seniors. The Mays family was there, and the father accidentally got his finger stuck between a folding chair and a column. It locked the finger off. The court uh, documents say the finger went shooting across the room. Offensive line coach Sam Pittman picked it up and put it on ice. Now, that happened two years ago, December 5th, this year, 2019, 
the Mays family just uh, filed in court in light of this uh, accident that he suffered. Now, a lot of people say, well, why would you wait two years? It seems to be a gambit to say that the Mays family was uh, inconvenienced or somehow injured, and therefore, Cade Mays should get immediate el eligibility at the University of Tennessee. We don't know for certain that that's the case, but the timing seems very suspicious. In all my 26 years of covering University of Georgia, I've never seen a recruiting story quite this crazy. Uh, so this is this bears watching. Next on Primetime, an inside look at how the Pentagon is dealing with tensions in Iran, along with the president's message to the nation. Where's my pen? Have you seen it? Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foyne Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go. Oh, and Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Auntie. Yeah. Auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. <laughs> I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekday, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boil Water Advisory. Hyperlocal, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So y'all just do what I say in the flow. No, 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 You kill the super. Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta. From movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A-Scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, Ooh, did I not text you? All right. Ah, it's in my drafts. That's my bad. So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm -hmm. Stop. After days of uncertainty, missile strikes in protests both at home and overseas, the president says the United States is ready to embrace peace. Tonight, we continue to follow reaction to President Trump's address after Iran attacked military bases in Iraq, housing U.S. troops overnight. The president said no U.S. or Iraqi forces were hurt in the strikes, and Iran now appears to be standing down. But the president also stood his ground on the killing of Iran's top general, which prompted the retaliation. Soleimani's hands were drenched in both American and Iranian blood. He should have been terminated long ago. By removing Soleimani, we have sent a powerful message to terrorists. If you value your own life, you will not threaten the lives of our people. Joining me right now is NBC News national security and Pentagon correspondent Courtney Kuby. Now, Courtney, President Trump seemed to actually downplay any further risk from Iran and didn't repeat any of his threats of violence from earlier this week that we heard. So tell me, is Washington breathing a sigh of relief tonight? So I would say that it's a cautious, uh, optimistic, cautiously optimistic sigh right now. They, uh, there's, there's certainly not the sense that this is all over. But one of the big questions we were asking after these initial strikes last night is, how is the U.S. going to respond? Well, we know now, based off what, the pres what President Trump said earlier today, that rather than a military response, this is a diplomatic response. He announced, announced these sanctions. Uh, that was one of the big questions, not just how would Iran, but how would the U.S respond here. But the reason that I can't say that everyone is breathing a sigh of relief is 
while the conventional threat from the Iranian military to the U.S. military seems to have abated with these strikes last night, there's still a very real threat from what the military calls the asymmetric warfare. So this is these proxy groups, Shia militia groups who are backed by Iran, who still have the intent and, and much of the funding and the capability to attack U.S. forces in the region, Aisha. That's definitely something to be on the lookout for. So Iran's foreign minister indicated that after the attacks last night that Iran wasn't seeking war, but they will defend themselves over aggression. So does any doubt remain out there that the country could engage in future attacks as a result of this tension that's still brewing? There's, I mean, there's no doubt that both sides right now are trying to bring down the tension. But even if Iran—I mean, uh, Zarif, in his tweet last night, he also said that the proportional response had concluded. I think that's what's giving people some confidence that here in the Pentagon and, and in Washington that the conventional side of this, the military side, has ended. But the reality is, Iran has been a threat with, through these po proxy groups throughout the region for decades. And it, it has really stepped up just in the last— several months. Uh, I was actually—I was in Baghdad a, a couple of weeks ago when one of these rocket attacks came in, and it killed an Iraqi soldier and wounded another one. That was one of these cases of Kateb Hezbollah, uh, an Iranian proxy group, striking out at the U.S. military right there in Baghdad. So those kinds of threats will continue. We should also expect the U.S. military is going to continue to heighten state of readiness in the Gulf region, out in the waterways, where they have US, a large U.S. military presence. And we should also be on the lookout for some kind of a cyber response. See, a lot of us don't know about these proxy groups, and a lot of people had never even heard of Soleimani before. Now, the president labeled Soleimani a ruthless terrorist who was an imminent threat. Do you think that's an accurate characterization? There, I mean, there's absolutely no doubt that Soleimani was a, a threat to Americans, to to Iraqis, to to a number of people throughout that region, and actually throughout the world, to West, in the, much of the Western world. There's absolutely no doubt he's he has a proven decades of um, of attacks. You know, we keep hearing he had blood on his hands. The big question here, what everyone is hanging the, the, this intelligence on, is the idea that there was some large imminent threat, certainly a continued threat from him. You know, as I said, he's, he's one of the big backers of Kateb Hezbollah, one of the groups in um, one of the Shia militia groups in Iraq. There's no doubt that that threat existed. But was there something that was bigger that warranted this kind of a strike? You know, uh, that's the question that lawmakers on Capitol Hill are coming out now that they've been briefed today and criticizing the fact that the administration keeps saying that this was imminent and that they absolutely ha had to act now. Especially the more that we peel back the onion on this, it seems that they keep hanging this on the fact that uh, Soleimani is, has been a threat for decades, as opposed to giving us any real specifics about this alleged imminent threat, Aisha. All right. Thank you so much, Courtney, for bringing us up to date on that and giving us that interesting insight. Thank you. Thank you. You can watch the president's full speech on 11alive.com and the 11 Alive YouTube page. You can also read the full transcript in the As Seen on TV section of the 11 Alive app. Up next, we take you inside a hostage negotiation. Can you make me a promise you're not going to hurt yourself or anybody else? He put the gun up to my side and said that you're not going anywhere. How an alleged drug addict was able to run a sober living home and the loophole that makes it legal in Georgia. A reveal investigation coming up on Prime Time on WATL. Different backgrounds, languages, and religions, and who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once in Olympic City, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks' Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us. Use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from 5 to 7 on The Morning Rush on 11 Alive. Televised news 
newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Babe, where are my keys? Uh, where's my lunch? Where's my phone? Hey, where's my blue shirt? Where's my pen? Have you seen it? Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foyn Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go to waste. Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Auntie. No. Auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boil Water Advisory. Hyper-local, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make, call me, but I stay in. Hello, and welcome to The Review on Primetime. I'm Andy Parati. Cobb County lawmakers are investigating how to regulate an industry making a living off of a vulnerable population with little oversight. It involves drug addicts who desperately want to regain sobriety, paying to live in so-called sober living homes. This past November, the reveal uncovered one accused of taking advantage of its clients that almost cost them their lives. Cobb County 911, what's the location of your emergency? Yes, uh, my name is Frank Malone, and uh, the police got my house surrounded right now. You're about to listen to the voice of a hostage held at gunpoint for 36 hours. Is he holding you against your will? Just answer yes or no. Yes. Do you want to get out, correct? Yes, sir. Barricaded inside, a 27-year-old woman and Frank Malone, a repeat violent offender believed to be on meth and on the phone with Cobb County Police. Can you make me a promise you're not going to hurt yourself or anybody else? Just don't, don't run up in this house. Don't do that. Sydney Caha is when the hostage. He put the gun up to my side and said that you're not going anywhere. Let Sydney go, then you come on out with your hands up. We couldn't go to the bathroom. If we did go to the bathroom, we had to go in a pot. Armored vehicles, sharpshooters, and a surveillance robot stand by to take action. So he was almost using me as like a shield for himself. And then at exactly 3.05 on October 30th, Frank released Sydney alive. It was a relief that I can't ever explain. All memories of that day continue to haunt Sydney. The home once symbolized a second chance at redemption. It's owned by a company called New Transitions, a sober living home for drug addicts and recovery. Sydney abused heroin for seven years. It took everything in my life and destroyed it. Everything that I touched, it was destroyed. Sydney moved into the home October 2018 to meet a Cobb County drug court mandate. Instead of jail, offenders seek treatment. Typically, sober living homes have strict rules, no drugs, random testing, and curfews. Sydney says none of that was happening at New Transitions. The first thing I saw when I went into one of the rooms was a drawer full of needles. Being an addict, you can't go in and see something like that. In a place that you're supposed to be recovering. In a place that I'm supposed to be recovering. It wasn't just Sydney who noticed these things. In 2015, Georgia's State Board of Pardons and Parole removed new transitions from an approved list of transitional housing for offenders after it received complaints about a client given meth by housing manager. About that same time, GAR, or Georgia's Association of Recovery Residents, also pulled its certification. 
Dick Cottrell is the organization's former president. In the end, we have to say, sorry, we've given you fair warning. We have come here and attempted to help you come up to GAR standards, and you haven't complied. Cottrell delivered that message to this woman, Barbara Gray, the owner of New Transitions. After she declined interview requests, we caught up with her this past October. Do you think drugs are appropriate inside sober talk living homes? Talk to my lawyer. I will not talk to you. While Gray isn't talking, one of her former employees is. Frank Malone, he's that same man accused of holding Sydney hostage and also one of Gray's former house managers. In a letter obtained by The Reveal, Malone writes from jail, Barbara Gray ruined my life, and she's ruining the lives of other addicts that are taking their recovery and sobriety seriously. She uses drug addicts as house managers. I was one of them. Do you regret hiring a convicted felon to run your no, sober no living home? No comment. Talk to my lawyer. Gray's attorney tells The Reveal New Transitions is no longer in operation. But the reveal uncovered it wouldn't take much for her or anyone to reopen a sober living home business in Georgia. No special licenses needed. That means no inspections. Lee Davis is Sydney's attorney. If you are going to be diverting people into a system that requires them to find something like sober living, then I think you need to have a hand in watching over to make sure the sober living places are doing what they're supposed to be doing. How many sober living recovery homes are there in Georgia? I wish anyone knew. Cottrell doesn't want the state to regulate sober living homes, but he would like to see Georgia mandate homes become GAR certified which he claims abides by strict standards. The major overarching standard is the safety of the residents. If the organization finds significant problems, can it shut down a home? No, we cannot do that. Can it levy a financial penalty? No, we cannot do that. He is a convicted felon with a rap sheet, and he also had a gun when he held those people hostage. Nobody's holding him accountable. Anybody, you could go start up a sober living not knowing what you're doing and bring in a bunch of addicts, and it become a not good place to live. Earlier today, Cobb County Commissioner Bob Ott and other stakeholders held a meeting to discuss the problem. Commissioner Ott would like to find a way to track them and to make sure the homes are GAR certified. State Senator Kay Kirkpatrick also attended. She plans to file a bill this session to address other issues, which could include cracking down on patient brokering. You can see more in-depth investigations like this one by going to our website, 11alive.com. And don't forget to watch The Reveal, the only local investigative show in the country, Sundays at 6 on our sister station, 11 Alive News. Well, we had temperatures today that warmed up into the lower 60s with that sunshine. It felt really nice out there. Above average, we should be around 52 for this time of year. It was a chilly start, though. We got down to 36 this morning, which is close to normal. We should be around 34. It is going to be another chilly start early in the morning. Watch how these temperatures are going to be falling through the overnight hours uh, into those 30s. And then we warm up tomorrow into the 60s again. Now, the difference tomorrow compared to what we had today is that we will have more clouds building in. We're going to start off with some sunshine, but then the clouds, clouds gradually build in once we go through the day. And then the rain returns on Friday. I'm not concerned about severe weather on Friday. We're just going to have some showers that will move our way. It is going to be on Saturday when we have the potential for strong storms, maybe some severe weather moving in, meaning the risk for some damaging winds, and yes, maybe even the chance for some tornadoes. Stay with us. We are kind of analyzing some new model data that has been coming in today and tonight. We're going to have more on the timing and what possibly you might could expect on Saturday. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. All right, thanks, Chris. We're following breaking news out of Gwinnett County, a homicide investigation at a business there in Buford. 11 Alive Chinoo Heard just arrived to the scene on Hamilton Mill Road. Chinoo, what can you tell us? Yeah, guys, we just pulled up to the scene a few minutes ago, and this is what it looks like right now. Lots of police here, and so far, what we know from police 
is that it happened at the O'Reilly's Auto Parts store right there, as you can see, taped off all the way around. We're told it was it is a homicide right now. Police, as you can see, working here are trying to piece together the circumstances and who the victims are. And just a few minutes ago, not long after we arrived over on this way, the crime scene investigative unit just also got here on scene. Now, I did chat real quick with the police spokesperson. She tells me again, they're still trying to get updates on what's going on here. Again, trying to figure out the circumstances and who the victim is in this case. But lots of police here and they're talking to several people around the area from what I can see. But again, we are in touch with the police. We're trying to get the update on this. We'll bring you the latest right here as we continue to find out more. Guys. All right, Chinu, thanks a lot for the update. You know, even though it's come under fire in two separate state backed reports, Georgia lawmakers appear to be sticking behind a state program that has fueled the state's film industry. Yet a film industry insider says that the state may need to play a little closer attention to how the state tax credit is actually used. 11 Alive's Doug Richards has more. The state audit says Georgia's tax credits for filmmakers are the most generous in America. The question now for lawmakers is whether they are too generous or too easily abused by filmmakers. The audit shows filmmakers got millions in tax credits for ineligible expenses, including for work done outside the state or for expenses unrelated to film production. The audit says the state should pay closer attention. And one film industry auditor says that's probably a good idea. In fact, I, I think I agree with a lot of the recommendations of the audit report, which is to have you know a little bit more oversight. But Peter Stathopoulos cautions against changing the tax credit program itself, which has distributed billions in government subsidies to a film industry now thriving in Georgia as a result. This week's audit comes on the heels of another report from Kennesaw State University, which says the much repeated claim of the film industry's value of nine and a half billion dollars lacks any economic justification, saying it was actually less than half of that. Instead of creating 92,000 jobs, as the state has said, the KSU study says the actual number is about one third of that. There are some 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 valid concerns about how the taxes are collected, how how it's recorded. Democrat Terry Anulowitz is among the lawmakers saying Georgia's film industry has become too important to disassemble based on flawed execution of the tax credit. Republican Steve Gooch agrees. If there's indications of fraud and abuse and you would address those issues first and not overreact by repealing the entire tax credit. Well, Georgia students spent months raising money to go to Puerto Rico to help orphans, but almost as soon as they landed, the island was rattled by a massive earthquake tonight. We're hearing from them as they return home and why they feel incredibly lucky in spite of all of this. <laughs> Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Right, right. About I mean, that. Reward would be... Slimming down. Okay, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. A little water yes. in my cup. And and beautiful skin. Well, you know, even too. more beautiful skin, you know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. It's not gonna be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning rush, weekdays, five to seven AM. Only on eleven alive. Some mornings what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the rush block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the rush block on the morning rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hotspots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends.
news of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever-changing, always interesting. The Crog Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pristy, eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel it's good vibe. When you vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate, we just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're going to get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must-see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite. Tonight, hundreds of people are staying in government shelters after being rocked by the strongest earthquake to hit Puerto Rico in 100 years. The majority of the island is without power, and many people are sleeping outside as they fear aftershocks. It's even more devastating because the island is still recovering from when Hurricane Maria hit there in 2017. The quake coming just after 45 or 42 students with the Trinity Christian School landed in Puerto Rico to help out some orphans. The students returned home today and spoke with Caitlin Ross. A lot of the kids slept right through the initial earthquake, but when they woke up and heard what happened, they were terrified. They did feel the aftershocks, though, and worried for their safety. More worried, though, were their families back here in Georgia who couldn't get in touch with the kids at first. Thankfully, they were quickly able to get in touch with some of the adults on the trip who assured them that everything was fine. The hotel they were staying in was quite a long way away from the epicenter of the earthquake, and their hotel had a generator, so they never even lost power. But the kids say even though they were okay, they really worried for the people of Puerto Rico. They're still recovering there from a massive hurricane and say they could already tell some people who live there were really struggling in the aftermath. Places nearby didn't, couldn't open because they didn't have power, so it was just really hard to see. She designed t-shirts to help raise money for the trip and says she's already started thinking about ways she can get back to Puerto Rico next year and help the people who live there recover. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers. We mentioned earlier about that uh, high and low today, where the low uh, close to average, the high above average. Take a look at rainfall. Uh, we didn't have any rain today. We're not expecting any rain tomorrow. This surplus is going to shrink a little bit uh, tomorrow. And then once we get into Friday and into Saturday, we're going to watch the, the surplus start to rise again as we're going to see more of that rain that is going to be moving our way. Again, the headlines showing more clouds coming in Thursday, rain returning Friday, and those strong storms pushing in here for your Saturday. So here's a look at the wasometer for Thursday. This is our scale from 1 to 11, where an 11 is a perfect day. We're going to start off in the morning with chilly air right around 38 degrees. We'll have sunshine to start the day, but then the clouds are going to start building in. We won't see any rain yet, excuse me, <coughs> yet tomorrow but the clouds will start building in, blocking out more of that sun once we get into the afternoon hours. We still think we'll get up to 62 degrees with that nine on the wasometer. So here's the timeline. Dry weather conditions tonight in the morning. You can see mostly sunny skies. It's going to be chilly. And then watch as we get closer to lunchtime. This uh, uh, cloud cover is going to start building out to the west while we also have an easterly flow here at the surface. And that cloud cover is just going to start building up and thickening up through the day blocking out more of that sun, especially into the afternoon. This is at 5 o'clock, looking mostly cloudy in the 5 o'clock hour. And then uh, during the nighttime hours on Thursday, looking good. Friday morning, mostly cloudy, but still no rain. Just be prepared that any time during the day on Friday, we could have a couple of scattered showers. I really think the rain chances will be a little bit better late afternoon and into the evening. But again, we're not expecting any severe weather here on Friday, just some scattered showers. And then on Saturday, 
we're going to be tracking some rain in the area. See this southerly flow pumping up a lot of moisture, pumping up some warm air. We'll have instability in place. High temperatures right around 70 to 1 degrees. And then here's that frontal boundary moving our way with that area of low pressure. This has the heavy rain and storms with it. And that's when we're going to start to see a little bit of shear interacting with the instability that's already in place. And that's why we're calling for that threat for these strong storms to move our way. The timing looks like late afternoon, Saturday into the evening hours. This is the map for seven o'clock. Those storms northwest and into West Georgia approaching the Atlanta area once we go through the again late afternoon and evening hours. That severe weather threat on Friday is out to the west. This tan color there shows the enhanced risk or level three of five risk that more what we would be equivalent to an enhanced risk would be in Mississippi and Alabama on uh, Saturday with that what would be the equivalent of a slight risk moving into Metro Atlanta here for your Saturday. That would be level two of five chance for those strong storms. The main threats would be damaging winds. Tornadoes are also going to be possible on Saturday. We're going to keep you post posted on that and give you more updates as we get closer to it. There's that rain. Uh, oh yeah, don't forget the QR code. Did, uh, did we show that? I'm sorry. I totally forgot to mention We'll do this again at 10 o'clock. If you don't have time to do this right this second here to hold your phone up to the QR code, um, we'll do it again around 10 15. This will help you download the 11 Alive app to get you ready for the storm. So we'll do that again at 10 15. Watch for that. There's that seven day where you see the rain chance Friday, 60%, 90% chance for showers and some storms Saturday. A break in the rain Sunday. More rain returns Monday and Tuesday with temperatures staying warm next week in the 60s. A Georgia woman is taking action after she says Walmart. Employees in Warner Robins asked her to leave because her service dog didn't have a marked vest. But are service animals required to wear one inside stores? Sabrina Burst from our sister station in Macon set out to verify. Shiloh Martinez has owned her service dog, Katie, for about a year. Most of her tasks would include things for anxiety, such as deep pressure therapy and light mobility work for me. On Sunday, Martinez says Walmart employees questioned why her dog didn't have a marked service animal vest before asking her to leave the store. She doesn't have to have any kind of marking on her. Okay, but Walmart has the right to adjust any policy. But federal law their, That's their policy. Well, so I'd like to see it on paper. That's then. against. I'd like to see it on paper. Do service animals have to wear a marked vest? According to the U.S. Department of Justice, the Americans with Disabilities Act does not require service animals to wear a vest, ID tag, or specific harness. It does, however, say service animals must be harnessed, leashed, or tethered unless the device interferes with the service animal's work. So we verify service animals don't have to wear a marked vest. Discrimination against us does happen quite frequently in restaurants, uh, stores like Walmart, gas stations. Why exactly do we have to leave? I just need to get that on video. No, I'm not going to leave until sure. you tell me a reason. Martinez says different employees asked her multiple times if her dog was a service animal. She says one of the employees got aggressive with her when she refused to leave. She says that's when she had a panic attack and Walmart employees called the police. It was intimidating, honestly. And I'm really disappointed that their first thought was not to listen to me, but to try to intimidate me, to scare me out of the store. Martinez says a Walmart manager contacted her to apologize for the situation, but she says that's not enough. Further educate the employees. The richest county in Georgia is right here in Metro Atlanta. So we went there to find the secret of their success. Uh, yeah. Right, right. And the well, reward would be slimming, slimming down. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Right, yeah, okay. Yeah. A little water yes. in my cup. And and beautiful skin. Well, you well, know, I even too. more beautiful skin. You know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. I'm not gonna be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning Rush weekdays, five to seven a.m. Only on Eleven Alive. Some mornings, what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Block on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hotspots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends.
News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever-changing, always interesting. The Crock Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pristy, eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel it's good vibes. We vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate, we just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're going to get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must-see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't. All right, so Georgia's economy is predicted to slow down this year, but things are still trending upward in our state. And the financial forecast looks particularly rosy for Forsyth County, named the wealthiest county in Georgia and one of the richest in the nation. Absolutely. So we spoke with the vice president for economic development in Forsyth County to understand where this money is coming from. You look at us nationally, we're actually the 16th uh, wealthiest county in the entire United States, which I think is a pretty uh, fascinating stat when you think of Metro Washington, D.C., you know, Boston, San Francisco, L.A., Chicago, New York, and little old Forsyth County is the 16th and moving up, I might add, too. The biggest thing driving that is we have this highly educated uh, immigrant population that's moving in our community, uh, you know, primarily driven by the, uh, the Asian Indian community and then to a lesser extent the Asian Korean community. Uh, but these are uh, just as highly educated masters, PhD, they're working in our tech sector, they're working in our healthcare sector, uh, and uh, that's really uh, one of the things that's uh, driving uh, that, uh, you know, that overall income level up is this highly educated immigrant population. Our side of Lake Lanier, I think, uh, developed uh, earlier than the other parts of Lake Lanier, uh, and so I think there are some great opportunities right now you're seeing with uh, redevelopment on Lake Lanier, where people are buying homes, uh, are, you know, uh, very large lots, they're uh, bulldozing it, and then they're, you know, basically building uh, uh, several, you know, I call it, you know, uh, nicer, larger homes that are multi-story as opposed to what was at one time a weekend retreat. Uh, so my guess is when the new census comes out, you know, that's going to be going on, uh, I guess, uh, very much this year. Uh, those numbers will start rolling out next year. Uh, my guess is we'll crack the top 15 uh, in the very near future. Uh, and so I think that, you know, it's just an interesting time to be a resident in Forsyth County. All right. So to see how Forsyth County compared with other wealthy counties around the country, just head to mycomingnews.com. We're going to see clouds increasing during the day tomorrow. It's going to start off chilly at 38. Then we get up to 62 in the afternoon. And then Friday, the rain moves in. We have the storm risk on Saturday. Some of those storms can be severe. A break in the rain Sunday. And then more rain comes in Monday, Tuesday, and into Wednesday next week. And it stays warm next week, too, with more 60s. All right. Stick around. Prime time rolls on at 10 p.m. We'll see you on 11 Alive at 11. The future of America. Once in Olympic City, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film Hawks' Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us. Use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from 5 to 7 on The Morning Rush on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Babe, where are my keys? Uh -huh. 
Where's my lunch? Where's my phone? Hey, where's my blue shirt? Where's my pen? Have you seen it? Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm gonna go ahead and retire. <laughs> It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire yeah. week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, <laughs> on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go. Oh, away. Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Uh, auntie. Yeah. <laughs> auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. <laughs> I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekday, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boyle Water Advisory. Hyper-local, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So you to do what I say. I'm no, 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 So I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta, from movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood, it's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, Ooh, did I not text you? All right. Eleven Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. We begin with breaking news tonight. Investigators are now on the scene of a homicide at an auto parts store in Buford. Eleven Alive Shanu Heard was the first reporter on the scene. He joins us live with the latest tonight. You guys, I just got an update from police a few minutes ago. Now, police just told me this happened at this O'Reilly Auto Parts store just after 8 p.m. Now, this is what the latest is. Police are looking for a male suspect. The victim in this case is a man who worked at the store, an employee here. Now, as to the circumstances, police say the suspect followed a female employee into the store and demanded the cash drawer. That's when the male employee came out from the back of the store and saw what was going on. He was armed. He drew his weapon. And when the suspect saw the employee draw a weapon, he shot and killed the victim. And then police say the suspect ran out of the store, got in a car, and took off towards I-85, which is not far from where this store is. Again, the victim in this case has not been identified, but we do know from what police has told me is the victim is a male employee of this store. Again, still not identified. Now, right now, what police are still doing on scene is they're still investigating around the area. They've extended the perimeter because they think there might be extra evidence, and they're still waiting to go inside of the store Police say they're waiting for a search warrant. As soon as that's signed, they'll go inside the store and gather more evidence and continue with their investigation. But we're still waiting to get more details. As soon as we learn more, we'll bring you the latest right here on 11 Alive. Guys? Shanu Her in Buford tonight. Now to the crisis in Iran. The United States House is getting ready to vote on the Democrats' plan to limit President Trump's war-making powers, and passage is all but certain in the House. But not in the Republican-led Senate, all while the world breathing a sigh of relief that last night's missile attacks by Iran on U.S. troops did not lead to an escalation into war. Tonight, we hear from an Iranian-American in Atlanta who is particularly relieved. Here's John Shirk. The world's most welcome word this day, de-escalation. Iran appears to be standing down, which is a good thing for all parties concerned and a very good thing 
for the world. No Americans harmed. And while Iran's supreme leader insisted Tuesday's missile attacks on U.S. troops who were based in Iraq were a slap in the face of America for killing Iran's top general, satellite photos of the targeted base show the before and after, the damage that President Trump calls minimal. For running Americans. Amir Faroqi, an Atlanta City Council member and one of a handful of Iranian American elected officials in the U.S., relieved for his family in Iran and for U.S. troops that everyone is taking a step back. The retaliation last night was, I think, mild enough and, and sent a message that both sides want to take a, a path, excuse me, a path away from war. And hopefully the path forward is not one of saber rattling, but is one of diplomacy and multilateral co collaboration. In Washington, at least two Republican senators came out of a briefing with the administration angry at the president and his justification to use the War Powers Act in killing Iran's General Soleimani. And they're ready to vote to limit the president's military actions in Iran. But for now, it's all a war of words, not missiles. And you can find the latest developments on the tension between the United States and Iran on 11alive.com. You can also download the 11 Alive News app and have alerts sent to your phone. Here's a new one. Police say a man broke into a tire shop and then he got trapped. So he had to call 911. Police appeared and, of course, arrested him. Cartersville police say that Seth King... This man forced his way into Salgado Tire on Sunday. At some point, he got trapped when a rack of tires fell on him. He had to call for help. We talked with the store employee today who says that each night at closing time, he stacks up tires against the back door for extra security. Police believe those tires fell on Mr. King when he went through that door. Two Georgia men are getting a second chance in life after both were recently released from prison. One wrongfully convicted, the other, according to prosecutors, sentenced too harshly. As Ryan Kruger explains tonight, one of the biggest celebrities in the state is now helping out. Inside the largest film studio in the country, a happy ending worthy of any Hollywood blockbuster, courtesy of Tyler Perry. And if you simply call that number, Mr. Perry says that you can start to work on Monday here at Tyler Perry. The man on the right is Daryl Hall, who spent more than two decades of his life behind bars for what Fulton County DA Paul Howard describes as less than two grams of cocaine. He was given a life sentence. I'm almost ashamed to tell you what he was sentenced for. Hall is one of the first cases handled by the newly created Conviction Integrity Unit, the first of its kind in Georgia. The idea, according to Howard, is to look back at old cases in Fulton County and make sure they got it right. We can't depend on family members to do it, but the law enforcement and prosecutors and the people in the criminal justice system, we ought to do it ourselves. Another Georgia man got his taste of freedom. On Wednesday, Kerry Robinson walked out of a South Georgia prison after new DNA testing proved he was wrongly convicted of rape 18 years ago. The Georgia Innocence Project worked that case. Two men getting new chances at life. If you are unjustly convicted, you should not spend a second of time in a jail. One notorious case the Conviction Integrity Union is currently looking into is the Atlanta child murders to see if anyone else should face charges. A woman is dead after a head-on crash with a school bus. Video from the 11 Alive Sky Tracker shows the front of the mangled bus, police say an SUV crossed the center line and hit it near Highway 113 and Spinks Road in Carroll County this morning. The driver of the SUV was killed. The only student on board and the bus driver are okay. Repairs are now complete after a massive fire shut down a busy street in East Atlanta for almost 24 hours. Flames took over the business and spilled out onto Memorial Drive yesterday. Witnesses describe seeing 40-foot flames shooting into the air. Atlanta Gas Light says private contractors hit a six-inch natural gas line. A stolen delivery van has been returned to Amazon, but police say they are still looking for the people who took it in the first place. The Amazon driver told police a man stole the van from him at gunpoint on Sunday in southwest Atlanta. He says the man also took off with his phone. Police say they later found that van in East Point. Busted a taco thief caught in a nap and you won't believe how this break in went down. Ron Jones walks us through the play by play. A Christmas crime you just have to see this Taco Bell on Sugarloaf Parkway in Lawrenceville. 
obviously closed, but that didn't stop this hungry burglar. Police say he forced open the drive through window, and once inside, he went to work. I mean, he literally went to work, and it seemed like he knew exactly what he was doing. Watch as he grabs some frozen food out of the Taco Bell freezer and whips up a hot meal. Remember, he's considered a burglar and police want to catch him, but this guy doesn't seem worried as he waits for the fryer to do its thing. And the meal must have been pretty good. Minutes later, the burglar gets a little sleepy and naps on the kitchen floor. Do you know who he is? It investigators want to see this bedtime burglar napping in a jail cell. I have to admit, I... I love Taco Bell, Aisha. I'm glad you got that out. <laughs> okay. All right, we move on. Another Metro Atlanta company has been spewing the cancer-causing gas ethylene oxide into the air. Sterilization Services of Georgia is on Fulton Industrial Boulevard in Atlanta. It's being fined $3,000 a day this month until they install new filters to limit the emissions of ethylene oxide. They are the third company in the Atlanta area found to be leaking ethylene oxide this year, including Sterengetics in Smyrna and BD in Covington. Elevated levels of, <clears throat> excuse me, of ethylene oxide have been found in all of those communities. The companies use the gas to sterilize medical equipment. The Atlanta Public Schools cheating scandal impacted a generation of students, but one of the first former educators sent to prison in the case was just granted parole. Tamara Cotman is one of 11 former teachers and administrators convicted of racketeering. They're accused of changing students' answers on those standardized tests and pocketing the performance bonuses. Cotman turned herself in back in October 2018 after she lost her appeal to the state Supreme Court. State officials say Cotman was eligible for parole in September but was released on January 2nd. Though it's come under fire in two separate state-backed reports, Georgia lawmakers appear to be sticking behind the program that has fueled the state's film industry. Yet a film industry insider says the state may need to pay closer attention to how the state tax credit is used. Here's 11 Alive's Doug Richards with more. The state audit says Georgia's tax credits for filmmakers are the most generous in America. The question now for lawmakers is whether they are too generous or too easily abused by filmmakers. The audit shows filmmakers got millions in tax credits for ineligible expenses, including for work done outside the state or for expenses unrelated to film production. The audit says the state should pay closer attention. And one film industry auditor says that's probably a good idea. In fact, I, I think I agree with a lot of the recommendations of the audit report, which is to have you know a little bit more oversight. But Peter Stathopoulos cautions against changing the tax credit program itself which has distributed billions in government subsidies to a film industry now thriving in Georgia as a result. This week's audit comes on the heels of another report from Kennesaw State University, which says the much repeated claim of the film industry's value of nine and a half billion dollars lacks any economic justification, saying it was actually less than half of that. Instead of creating 92,000 jobs, as the state has said, the KSU study says the actual number is about one-third of that. There are some, some, some valid concerns about how the taxes are collected, how, how it's recorded. Democrat Terry Anulowitz is among the lawmakers saying Georgia's film industry has become too important to disassemble based on flawed execution of the tax credit. Republican Steve Gooch agrees. If there's indications of fraud and abuse and you would address those issues first and not overreact by repealing the entire tax credit. Hawk star Trey <laughs> Young is helping out the Atlanta community. He donated $10,000 to help cancel more than $1 million in medical debt. The relief group RIP Medical Debt says this will help nearly 600 families in Metro Atlanta. Another massive donation, this one, $10 million to help Kennesaw State's Honor College. Michigan billionaire John Brown and his wife Rosemary are behind the largest donation from a single donor in the university's history. Rosemary Brown retired after a 30-year career as a math teacher. She is an active member of KSU's Honors College Advisory Board. We had dry weather out there today and tomorrow a few changes come in with clouds and those clouds are in advance of the rain that pushes our way. And yes, even some storms moving in as we head into the weekend, some of these could turn severe. We're analyzing the latest we have on the timing and potential weather types. More on that coming up. They went to Puerto Rico to help orphans. Then that massive quake hit just after they landed. Tonight, we're hearing from local students 
who found themselves right in the middle of a natural disaster in this hemisphere. The Crock Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pristy, eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel it's good vibe. When you vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate. We just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're going to get here. And that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must-see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. It they does. are fun. <laughs> they're and they're convenient. Fun. Yeah. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. That's I just feel the like thing. they have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a yeah. new way of transporting. Crisis in Puerto Rico. Terrified residents are looking for help. After enduring two nights of intense earthquakes, at least one person was killed. Within the last 24 hours, President Trump approved FEMA assistance. Many families on the island are still recovering from when Hurricane Maria hit there two years ago. Puerto Rico's governor says they haven't had an emergency like this in 100 years. So you can imagine parents were really worried when the earthquake hit just after a group of Georgia students arrived there, intending to volunteer at orphanages tonight. All 42 students are back home after the school deemed it wasn't safe to stay there. A Delta flight was chartered for them to get home. Caitlin Ross was at the airport when the students touched down. There were flowers and hugs and quite a few tears as the kids from Trinity Christian School came up the escalator. Families waited anxiously to meet the 42 students who flew back from Puerto Rico today. Casey Metcalf told her parents she was never in any danger. We'll be okay. We're not hurt at all. Um, we had generators running the hotel, so we were okay. We had running water. Still, when the news of the massive 6.4 magnitude earthquake broke, many families panicked. Most of the kids, though, say they didn't even realize the quake had hit. They'd slept right through it. Everybody in my room did not feel it, but all of the adults did, so it was kind of scary when we woke up. The earthquake hit just 24 hours after the students landed, so they saw most places in crisis. Places nearby didn't, couldn't open because they didn't have power, so it was just really hard to see. They were on the trip to volunteer at orphanages in the region, but many of them closed down to the public after the earthquake. We didn't really get to go in many places. The school principal decided it wasn't safe to stay, and Delta was able to schedule a special flight to get the kids and parents back to Atlanta a full week before they were scheduled to return. Everybody was so sweet. They just have the best hearts. While they're happy to be back, they're disappointed they didn't get to volunteer like they had planned. Just to help the kids and be a hope for them. Some of the kids told me on the flight home they were already thinking about ways they could get back next year to help the people of Puerto Rico. Dry and cloudy tonight before we are hit with some wet weather, which is coming at the end of the week. Chief Meteorologist Chris Holcomb has our forecast tonight. Hey, Chris. Yeah, we're watching that cloud cover that's really going to be increasing more during the day tomorrow. We're going to start off in the morning with sunshine, and then the clouds start coming in as we go through the day. The rain, though, is going to hold off until Friday, and then we're also watching a storm risk for uh, the end of the weekend and mainly, or end of the week and mainly into the weekend. It's chilly out there right now. 
47 in town, but Atlanta is one of the warmer spots. We have 45 in Athens, 44 in Duluth, but a lot of places are a lot cooler. Look at Peachtree City at 37, Carrollton and LaGrange at 35, 37 in Rome and Dalton as well. So with the mainly clear skies out there, some places are clearing up faster or cooling off faster than others. Here in Atlanta, I do think we'll get down to 38 in the morning. That's going to be a chilly start and then up to 62 in the afternoon, which is really warmer than where we should be for this time of year. Today's high was 61. We will see more clouds though that are going to be building in. We're going to go with the nine on the wasometer. That's our scale uh, from one to 11, where an 11 is a perfect day. Now watch during the day tomorrow. We start off with sunshine, then those clouds start building in around lunchtime and then into the afternoon. More clouds will be here, but no rain moving into our area yet. Then going into Friday, we're going to see a few showers developing. No severe weather with this. It's Saturday when this next system starts moving our way, and that is the system that is going to have the potential for strong storms. Saturday morning scattered showers. Here it comes here Saturday after lunch and into the afternoon hours. This line of storms will have the potential for severe weather. We are here to help you prepare for this storm. And one thing that you can do right now, a QR code is popping up on the screen right now, and you can point your, your camera uh, on your phone to that QR code and it will let you download the 11 Alive app. And I'm going to leave this on the screen for a little while to give you time to do that. Just point your phone, uh, the camera at that, and it will help you download the 11 Alive app. That way you can set your notifications for alerts and you will be alerted if any severe storms are, are issued. Also on Saturday, if we're breaking in with severe weather coverage and you have to go down to your basement where you don't have a TV or maybe into a closet, you can take your iPhone and app with you, the 11 Alive app, and you can continue to watch our coverage. Now, I'm not concerned about severe weather here on Friday. That's going to be out to the west. The better chance will be in parts of Texas, Louisiana and Arkansas. It's on Saturday when this entire system moves over toward the east. We'll be in what is going to be the equivalent of a level two of five risk for severe storms. The equivalent of the level three of five risk is over into parts of Mississippi and also into Alabama. The risks that we have here because of the instability that's going to be in place and some of the shear in association with that frontal boundary that's moving our way with that squall line that's moving in. Uh, potentially damaging wind gusts. Tornadoes are a possibility. It's not a guarantee we'll have tornadoes, but it's a possibility. And also with the rain with this system, the flash flooding is possible as well. So here's another look at it. This is the American model. The showers uh, early on Saturday. It's going to be late afternoon into evening when we think this main line is going to be coming in from northwest and west Georgia, moving over to the east. We do think it'll be a little weaker once it moves over to the east of Atlanta. Still showers and storms there, but maybe not as strong. Again, we're going to be fine tuning this. On Sunday, the rain moves out. We'll have a brief period with no rain, and then look at that. It comes back up from the south on Monday into Tuesday, also on Wednesday, and we'll have some pretty impressive rainfall amounts with it. Now the, the first wave Friday into Saturday, we're going to be seeing generally with those storms, the potential between a half inch and an inch and a half of rain. And then into next week, we might see another round of showers that give us another two and a half to four inches or, or, or for a total of two and a half to four inches by the time it's all said and done. So warm air Thursday and Friday, the rain comes in Friday and then storms possible on Saturday, a break in the rain Sunday, but it's not going to cool off. We're going to be at 66 more rain arriving again Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday with temperatures, those highs staying way above average there in the mid 60s. Chris, thank you. Our state is known for so much. The beginning of the civil rights movement, James Brown in Augusta, the Allman brothers were in Macon. You can think about Hank Aaron, Evander Holyfield. Should we just go on and on and on about all of the wonderful things that our state has produced for the rest of the world? But there is a new report that has so many around here fired up. It ranks Georgia among the top 10 worst states to raise a family. This study was conducted by WalletHub. A number of factors they contend were considered, including family salary, the number of playgrounds, even local divorce rates. In conclusion, WalletHub ranked Georgia the ninth worst state in the nation to raise a family. Other states at the bottom of the list, Mississippi, Louisiana, and West Virginia. The best state to raise a family, according to WalletHub, is Minnesota, and the worst is New Mexico. We posted this on our 11 Alive Facebook page, and everybody had a lot to say about this. We want to hear from you. What do you think about this report? You can let us know, and you can find the story on the 11 Alive Facebook page. I'm Francesca Amaker with the A Scene. Men, women, and children of Atlanta, if you have a talent for acting, it is time to get to work in 2020. Wednesday's casting call roundup next in the A Scene. Went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. 
You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever-changing, always interesting. The Crog Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pretty eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel it's good vibe. We vibe with it. It's a good time. We don't worry about the hate. We just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're going to get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must-see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. It they does. are fun. <laughs> they're and they're convenient. Fun. Yeah. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. That's I just feel the like thing. they have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a yeah. new way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. What's the best part about Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. All right, folks, you know what time it is. You see your screen. It is time for a hump day edition of the A scene. And guess what? We have a casting call roundup for you. I'm trying to get you pizzade in 2020 and cut me my 10%. From Doom Patrol to the Underground Railroad, all these casting calls can be found on our Facebook group. So let's kick off with comedian turned social media star turned actor DC Youngfly. He's starring in a new movie filming here in Atlanta where he plays a drug dealer. So <laughs> here's where you come in. They need someone to play his right hand man, specifically a his Hispanic male for this gangster role, ages 20 to 34, and you must be able to speak in a Spanish accent. Filming goes down January 11th. And finally, Amazon's The Underground Railroad is now casting children. Specifically, they need 10 Caucasian children, boys and girls, for this American alternate history drama web television limited series, okay? It's directed by my guy, Barry Jenkins. He actually also directed uh, Moonlight. Something tells me this may be for a classroom scene. Filming takes place January 23rd, 27th and 28th and of course it's paid all the information on our AC Facebook group. All right, thanks, Fran. Well, that is my cue, and it's time for me to head out to get ready for Up Late, coming up at 11 p.m. on 11 Alive. So if you are an Up Later, join myself and Ron Jones. We'll be there. We look forward to seeing both of you guys coming up in about 35 minutes over in 11 Alive. Thank you, Aisha. Here's what's coming up. Do you live in the richest county in Georgia? My, oh, my, what a difference 33 years makes in the life and times of Forsyth County. My, oh, my. We'll talk about that coming up. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us. Use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from 5 to 7 on the Morning Rush on 11 Alive. Newscast, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Babe, where are my keys? Uh, where's my lunch? Where's my phone? Hey, where's my blue shirt?
Where's my pen? Have you seen it? Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go. Oh, and Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Auntie. No. Auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. <laughs> I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekday, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boyle Water Advisory. Hyper-local, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make, call me, but I stay in the flow. So you just do what I say in the No, 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 You can assume what you're doing with freedom. Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta. From movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, Ooh, did I not text you? All right. Ah, it's in my drafts. That's my bad. <laughs> So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm. Oh, I, I consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah, yeah, I've got the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Jess. I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish last. Oh, Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning. The chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff says he believes last night's double missile strikes on the Iraqi bases were intended to kill Americans. General Mark Milley echoed President Trump's address to the nation earlier today, crediting defensive measures and the United States early warning system for preventing any American deaths. But now claims about the airstrikes are taking over social media. So our national verified team decided to break down the most viral posts. Here is Jason Puckett. Social media can be an amazing tool for getting out quick information, but it also lets fake or misleading info out as well. Easy example, this tweet, shared thousands of times before it was taken down, initially claimed that 20 U.S. troops had died amid 60-plus missile strikes. That's false. President Trump himself confirmed there were no U.S. casualties or injuries, and the Pentagon's official statement said there were more than a dozen missiles, not 60. Then there's this image of a missile taking off. It was shared by the FARS news agency and other sites as an image of the strike, but it's not. This is from 2017. Here it is in a Guardian article about an Iranian strike on ISIS in Syria. Now, this photo was shared with claims that it was Ayatollah Khomeini overseeing the strike Tuesday. It's not. A reverse image search shows that it was from 2014, and an Iranian press release from that time shows it was Khomeini overseeing a presentation by the Aerospace Force of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard in 2014. It wasn't just photos and false info either. Videos have been and are still being shared. This video claims to be eyewitness video of Iranian missile barrage on American basis. Folks, this video has been removed from numerous sites and it keeps popping back up. Bottom line, it's false. It's from May and Qatar last year. Here it is posted on military.com. These claims all have fake info, adding confusion and tension to a serious situation. And it works because they use real photos. They aren't photoshopped. They're just not from this event. Accounts will purposefully take unrelated material and make it seem like it's real and relevant in order to mislead. And since they use hashtags like breaking or Iran war, they pop up for anyone who searches. That's why it's important to take a second and look at the source before you share. This video, for instance, was posted by a Twitter user with 49 followers who joined Twitter this week. 
that's not a reputable source of information. Seeing others like this, send us an email, we'll check them out. Our 24-7 digital team will bring you the very latest updates on the situation with Iran. There's a lot of phony images out there, a lot of fake information, and you want to make sure that, you know, what you are seeing is indeed fact and truth. You can check 11alive.com for more perspective and analysis. A mother arrested accused of making threats on Facebook after she says her child was bullied at school. Police say that Syria Oliver posted a video on Facebook threatening to hurt the students and staff at Gainesville Middle School. Police say she also had a warrant out for her arrest in Cobb County for assault with a weapon. A Henry County DJ facing more charges tonight. Malcolm Rhodes already accused of sexual battery against a teenage boy. Police now say they think he molested another minor. Rhodes is well known in Henry and Coweta counties. His social media pages showed that he's DJed field trips, pool parties, even hosted a nighttime glow party for children under the age of 16. New tonight, an officer is out of surgery after he was hit by a train while running after a suspect. Joe Hankey talked to the Polk County Police Chief today about the officer's recovery and, and how he got struck by a train. The Polk County Police Chief tells me on Tuesday one of his officers ran after a suspected thief. He chased him down along these train tracks, cutting through Rock Mart. But then a train came down the tracks, clipped the officer, and that foot chase came to a sudden end. 16-year veteran Polk County Police Officer Andy Anderson is now recovering in the hospital after breaking six ribs, an elbow, shoulder blade, and suffering a concussion and back injuries. Police Chief Kenny Dodd says he is relieved Anderson is alive, and Anderson is too. He, uh, he's thankful that he's still here. He's a wonderful father and husband, and uh, so he, he's just thankful that he's still here. Dodd says on Tuesday around noon, Anderson responded to a home on College Street in Rockmart to meet with a burglary victim who shared an image of the suspect. While investigating behind the home and along the nearby train tracks, Anderson noticed a man fitting the description of the suspect. Police have since ID'd the suspect as 18-year-old Jaden Motes, seen here in a previous Polk County mugshot. Moats left a stolen TV and guitar along the train tracks, Dodd says, as Anderson started pursuing him and radioed for backup. He heard the train. He just didn't realize how close to the tracks he was. Uh, we, we call that tunnel vision in law enforcement. You get so focused on the task at hand, you forget about your surroundings. And so the train hit him on the right side of his body and luckily knocked him away from the tracks. Dodd says a plow on the front of the train clipped Anderson, knocking him to the ground. Moats got away, but on the other side of the tracks, police arrested 46-year-old Nancy Borders. Dodd says she was waiting as Moats' getaway driver. Anderson tonight is out of surgery and undergoing further tests. When he will be back on the job is unknown. He's a 16-year veteran and uh, well-respected in our community, works very hard, and yeah, he is... He is eager to get back to work already, and uh, but he's just going to need to take time and recover. And tonight, Jaden Motes is still on the run and wanted. Anyone with information on his whereabouts is asked to call the Polk County Police Department. After a deadly flu season in Georgia, experts now are warning there could be more trouble ahead. The latest State Department of Health report showing 15 people have died from the flu in Georgia. Researchers at the University of Virginia say that flu levels will probably be high for the next few weeks, but... They're also warning there could be a second wave of flu activity. Last year, the CDC says the flu season lasted 21 weeks, the longest since the agency began keeping records. In Australia, where wildfires continue to burn, firefighters are using a break in the weather to shore up their defenses. The blazes expected to flare up again within days when scorching temperatures are expected to return. The fires have taken a bigger toll on the country's wildlife there have been estimates today, the first time that we have heard this, that up to one billion animals have been killed in these fires. The Australian Army is busy treating burned and injured animals at the Kangaroo Island Wildlife Park. The video, the stories that we have seen coming from this area are heartbreaking. More than 110 Army reservists are working with local authorities to help. You probably remember this one. It was a freak accident. A UGA sprinter impaled by a javelin while at track practice. Just horrific. We all remember this story that occurred last year. It punctured his lung and it put his track career on hold. And for a while, there was no guarantee that he was going to survive this. Now, here we are eight months after the accident. And Elijah Godwin is making a comeback. Nick Sturdivant has more on this recovery in this week's Whatever Happened To. Yeah, so you can see one by my armpit and there's one under that. While the scars are still visible, mentally and spiritually. I needed that like spiritual part of my life, that balance. So 
because I feel like that's what helped more than anything else, like get through this whole process, like to be able to get back on the track, to be able to like start training again. And Elijah Godwin says he's in a better place. The sophomore sprinter has been more determined than ever to compete again, doing intense rehab, focusing on his speed and endurance. In August, he started back on the track and he is um, back to his pre-injury speeds. The physical part of it, that's really like the easy part. Like, I really don't mind like doing none of the like exercises that I gotta do to get my body right. So my rehab isn't like separate from like training, it's like combined. So as I'm rehabbing, I'm also like getting better and faster, stronger. He's set to run in his first meet since his injury Saturday at Clemson University. And to think, less than a year ago, we first met Elijah in the hospital. May 2019, the UGA freshman accidentally backed into a javelin while doing a backward sprint drill on the infield. He suffered a collapsed lung, but successfully made it through surgery at Piedmont Athens Regional Medical Center. He's a fighter. Elijah said what made the recovery easier was the support he got from family, friends, and people he didn't know. It just felt so like genuine. A lot of people just was like, you got you you would think like everybody just want to see what's going on but no they really just want to know if you're okay so i try to reach out reach out back to everybody else who anybody who messaged me i try to like message them back now a lot of his concentration is centered towards saturday's meet just to be out there to run in less than a year of your injury is amazing so no matter what happens whether it goes good bad i'm just uh, i appreciate the opportunity to be out there Elijah will compete in the 400 and the 200 meter dash at Clemson on Saturday. He says he wants to continue to inspire people and he says he wants to be a counselor himself one day. Georgia's economy predicted to slow down in 2020, but things are still trending upward for our state and the financial forecast looks particularly good for one metro Atlanta County. According to a new study, Forsyth County is now the wealthiest county in Georgia. It ranks 16th richest in the United States. The county's median income per household is almost double the national average. Rob Long is Forsyth's vice president for economic development. He credits a couple of factors. The biggest thing driving that is we have this highly educated uh, immigrant population that's moving in our community. They're working in our tech sector, they're working in our healthcare sector. Uh, and uh, so I think there are some great opportunities right now you're seeing with uh, redevelopment on Lake Lanier, where people are buying homes uh, or you know, uh, very large lots. Let's also credit the late Reverend Hosea Williams, who in 1987 led those marches up there. Reverend Williams at the time told us all that this would happen one day, and he was right. To see more about how Forsyth County's economy stacks up to the rest of the country, go to my coming news section of 11alive.com. A shakeup in the United Kingdom. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle have announced they are taking a step back as senior members of the royal family. They announced it on Instagram. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex say they want to become financially independent. They also want their family to transition into the next chapter. The couple will split their time between the United Kingdom and North America. However, they still intend to fully support Her Majesty the Queen. We are watching this next system that's moving our way that's going to first increase our cloud cover, then bring us some rain, and then eventually a line of storms will move in. Stay with us. We'll let you know when they'll arrive and if we have the threat for damaging winds and tornadoes. James Harden in Atlanta tonight, but did Trey Young outshine him? Highlights are coming up next in sports. How about this block hot spots created by the artist Jex. People flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. <laughs> News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever changing, always interesting. The Crog Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pristy, eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel as good vibe. We vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate, we just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're gonna get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must see. 
there are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. It they does. are fun. <laughs> they're and they're convenient. Fun. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. That's I just feel the like thing. they have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a yeah. new way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together, our voices grow. Together, we come alive. Amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together, we are unstoppable. Together, we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they would ah. wait the next week. You're all, oh, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Atlanta. Almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Alive's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on. A health alert for you tonight. More people than ever are winning the fight against cancer. And that's one of the key takeaways from the American Cancer Society's annual report on cancer rates and trends. But within the report, news is decidedly mixed. While there has been a sharp uptick in survival rates of lung cancer, progress against some other forms of cancer sadly is stalling. Here's NBC's Sh uh, Sarah Dolliff. A new milestone on the cancer fighting front. Death rates declined 29% in 26 years. According to a new report by the American Cancer Society, that figure includes a 2.2% decrease from 2016 to 2017, the largest one-year decline of cancer deaths ever reported. It's highly significant that we're seeing such a tremendous drop, which means we're getting better at treating certain cancers. Mortality rates of lung cancer, the leading cause of cancer deaths, are down significantly, 4% per year over the past five years. Melanoma death rates saw an even sharper decline. We have drugs that stimulate the patient's bodies to kill their tumor cells. Overall, the American Cancer Society estimates nearly 3 million lives have been saved, roughly the population of Chicago. It means we're making good progress uh, in reducing the cancer burden. But the news isn't all positive. Health experts note white cancer patients have slightly higher five-year survival rates than African Americans. And progress is slowed when it comes to colon, breast, and prostate cancer we have a ways to go. We still need to develop better therapeutics, um, better diagnostics. They encourage individuals to do their part with smart lifestyle choices, including regular exercise, cancer screenings, limiting alcohol, and stopping, or better yet, never starting smoking. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers. We are watching the storm uh, forecast track very closely as we head into the weekend because we're going to see those rain chances that will be increasing in our area. Now, uh, tomorrow, 
we're looking fine. We're going to see uh, start off with sunshine early in the day and then look at the clouds as they start building in. Uh, this is at lunchtime. I think the clouds will be a little bit thicker as they cross over from the Alabama line into West Georgia. Just a few clouds beginning to develop here and then they thicken up a little bit more as we get into the afternoon hours, but still we're not going to see any rain here tomorrow. It's just going to be that buildup of cloud cover and then heading into Friday scattered showers at any time during the day, but it's not going to be a lot of rain early on later. <coughs> excuse me later in the day on Friday is when we'll see those showers beginning to build in a little bit more. But again, I'm not worried about severe weather for Friday, just general showers even on Saturday morning. Not a thunderstorm risk yet on Saturday morning, but there will be a few of those showers around. We have a, a pretty nice southerly flow here, warming us up into the lower 70s. Instability will be in place, some shear in place with this next line of storms that's moving our way. This is at lunchtime. It's still over in Alabama that risk for the strongest storms there that will continue moving our way. Our better chances will be late afternoon into parts of Northwest and West Georgia and into the evening hours here as this sweeps through the metro Atlanta area. And yes, when it does come through, there is the potential that we'll see some severe weather on Friday. The severe weather risk is well out to the west where we have that enhanced risk uh, for parts of Texas, uh, Louisiana, also into Arkansas. That's the level three of five risk. And then as we head into Saturday, that risk area moves into our region, parts of West Georgia into Metro Atlanta. The yellow that you see here would be the equivalent of a slight risk or the level two of five risk. And then the uh, area that you see out to the west, uh, this would be the equivalent of an enhanced risk. So look at the bottom of your screen. You see this right here? That is a QR code. And if you would like to download the 11 Alive app to help you get prepared for this storm, to watch the storms as they're moving in, all you have to do is get your phone camera, point it at this QR code and that will help you download the 11 Alive app and uh, that way you'll be able to set notifications to alert you if any warnings are issued on Saturday. You can also see our coverage there if you have to go into a closet or into your safe safe place and that will allow you here uh, to see our coverage. So we expect those storms on Saturday. Damaging winds, tornadoes are possible. Then on Sunday, decreasing clouds, a break in the rain, then more rain comes in Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday with temperatures that'll be in the mid 60s, much warmer than average next week too. Wednesday night sports, Luka Doncic has dominated the national headlines, but Trey Young, I'll tell you what, he is something to watch, a gifted athlete, plays hard every night, and tonight against the Houston Rockets, Trey had a game-high 42 points, his first 40-point triple-double. What a player he is. He is the third youngest ever to do it behind Luka and LeBron James. Pretty good company right there. Quavo, the Matt Ryan non-fan, enjoying a lot of basketball this week. James Harden had 22 points in the first quarter, firing over Trey Young, but quieted with DeAndre Hunter on him still finished with 41 man Alan Crabb nails a three later blocked by Damian Jones Hawks were almost down by 30 fourth quarter they get within three but too many fouls too many mistakes down the stretch Rockets win 122 to 115 Trey Young 42 points and he is just amazing 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 the Hawks right now with eight wins I think the hope was they would be better than that so I don't know. Maybe they will be. We'll see. Georgia Tech hosting number two Duke tonight. And look at that. Indeed. Jackets to a quick start. It's James Banks dunking it in. Uh, they would trail by almost 20 at halftime, but it has been all jackets in the second half. Moses Wright dunks it in. And then Jose Alvarado with the three. And the Jackets take a slim lead. But uh, again, some amazing transition plays for the Blue Devils. They have a 58-57 lead in the second half, but uh, Georgia Tech and Georgia, the men's basketball programs, showing some life. All right, Jake Fromm announcing today that he is foregoing his senior season in Athens. He's going to enter the NFL draft. He made the announcement on Twitter. Here's some of what he said. I would like to offer my sincerest thank you to UGA. Thank you to Coach Smart for believing in a scared 18-year-old who got handed the ball in South Bend, Indiana. I've decided that it is time for me to take on the next challenge in my life and pursue my lifelong dream of playing in the NFL. So go dogs and God bless. So here's the other quarterbacks entering the 2020 draft. Of course, we got Joe Burrow from 
LSU is final game Monday of the national championship. And then Tua declared on Monday. It's Justin Herbert from Oregon and former UGA starter Jacob Eason. So this is largely considered to be the top five quarterbacks in this year's draft. Soon after Fromm's announcement, our UGA insiders broke the news that offensive lineman Cade Mays was entering the transfer portal. And it sounds like he wants to play at Tennessee, where his father was a captain and his brother just enrolled. But now there's more to the story. It involves a finger being snapped off and consequently amputated. We bring in UGA insider Roddy Nabulsi. UJSports.com broke the news earlier today that the Mays family is suing the University of Georgia and a chair manufacturer. Apparently, when the Mays family was down on a visit on December 15th, 2017, they were at the UGA Gala, which is a big event where they honor all the seniors. The Mays family was there, and the father accidentally got his finger stuck between a folding chair and a column. It lopped the finger off. The court uh, documents say the finger went shooting across the room. Offensive line coach Sam Pittman picked it up and put it on ice. Now, that happened two years ago, December 5th, this year, 2019, the Mays family just uh, filed in court in light of this uh, accident that he suffered. Now, a lot of people say, well, why would you wait two years? It seems to be a gambit to say that the Mays family was uh, inconvenienced or somehow injured, and therefore, Cade Mays should get immediate el eligibility at the University of Tennessee. We don't know for certain that that's the case, but the timing seems very suspicious. In all my 26 years of covering the University of Georgia, I've never seen a recruiting story quite this crazy. Uh, so this is this bears watching. Yeah, no kidding. What a weird story. All right, that's it for sports. We'll be right back. Together we come alive, amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together we are unstoppable. Together we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they would yeah. wait the next week. You're, oh, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Atlanta, almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Alive's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man, it's the heart of the South. And it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home from different backgrounds, languages, and religions. And who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once an Olympic city, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks' Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us, use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from five to seven on the Morning Rush on 11 Alive. newscast not enough for you get even more at 11 alive's youtube channel where you'll find uncut interviews extended body cam footage live streams of atlanta's biggest trials and more subscribe to 11 alive today babe where are my keys uh, where's my lunch where's my phone hey where's my blue shirt where's my pen have you seen it Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foyne Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. 
where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, well, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go to waste. Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Uh, I'm fair. Well, we're going to see these uh, conditions changing through the next couple of days, Jeff. Clouds increase tomorrow, rain Friday, and then storms on Saturday, okay. and then more rain next week, too. Okay, that's how it is. Nothing that's we right. can do about that's it. That's right. It's here. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it. We'll see you tomorrow right here on the Big 36. Thanks for Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boil Water Advisory. Hyper local, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover, more videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me when I stay in the flow. So you to do what I say in the Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta. From movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, Ooh, did I not text you? All right. Ah, it's in my drafts. That's my bad. So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm. Stop. I, I consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah, I've like got them. the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Jess? I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish last. Oh, Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Right, right. About I mean, that. Reward would be... Slimming. Slimming down. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. A little water yes. in my cup. And and beautiful skin. <laughs> well, you know, well, even too. more beautiful skin. You know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. It's not gonna be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning rush weekdays, five to seven a.m. Only on Eleven Alive. Some mornings, what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Block on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your Morning Rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates.